This conference will now be recorded. We'll begin with the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah. Welcome everyone to the May 9th Mary County Commission meeting. Uh, we begin with public forum. Are there any uh, public comments? A few people online. Yeah. Any public comments? If anyone online would like to make a public comment, um, please unmute your microphone or type in the chat box. I see none. All right. Well, today we have David Arterbury with us. We appreciate you uh, being here today. If you want to come up to the seat with the microphone sure. so sure. our online people can hear. Oh, yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, David Arterbury with Stiefel Nicholas. I've got a couple of handouts here for you. Um, you want to take one passion down? Yeah, please. All right. Um, what I'm here today to talk um, a little bit about is the, the next steps that the county will need to take in order to uh, issue the bonds for the road improvement projects that you've been considering. Um, if you recall, a few months ago you adopted a, um, a charter resolution to authorize um, yourself to issue bonds for these sorts of projects, and that prepayment or that um, that. 60-day notice of protest period expired on the 3rd of May. Um, so you're now ready to start taking the next steps that you would need to do to issue the bonds. Um, the first thing I um, kind of point out to your attention is the calendar of events that I distributed. Um, and I don't know if, uh, team, if you distribute that to the commission yet. Um, I had given it to them a couple of times, oh, okay, a couple okay. of different so you've times. Seen it already. Seen it. Okay, yeah. okay. But I didn't have one in the packet for today, so that's probably helpful to have it today again. Okay, yes. okay. Well, good. The, the calendar, I think, is pretty self-explanatory. We sort of highlighted on it in yellow, sort of the the big action items that will occur. And today, you'll see um, what we're we've got scheduled is to review the financing plan. That's what we're doing now. Um, and then you also have a, a project resolution and a bond sale resolution, or sometimes we call it a go-to-market resolution, um, for you to consider, you know, after we're done talking and getting questions answered. And I'll, I'll, I'll defer to Mitch to kind of go over with you in more details uh, in a little bit, in a few minutes, what all is in those documents, what they entail. But, um, but basically, uh, if you take those steps today, then uh, we will work with, with Mitch and with Tina um, to prepare for a bond sale. Um, we'll be putting together um, the offering document for the issue, which is the document that would go to potential investors. Um, we're going to go um, submit the uh, transaction to a rating agency to get the bonds rated. Um, we'll also send out notice to potential purchasers or bidders on the bonds sort of around the region and around the country. Um, and if everything goes as planned, then um, the county would receive bids for those bonds on June 9th. Um, and it, so that's the date on which the, the bids will actually be open and the, the low bid, the best bid, would be determined. Um, we would then return to you at your meeting on the 13th of June and you would pass a final bond resolution. That, that would actually lock in those interest rates that were, that were on the best bid uh, and officially authorize the issuance of the bonds. The, uh, the, the sale is on the, the 9th of June. Right, correct. Yeah. Um, and then um, after that occurs, after you adopt that bond resolution, that's the last official action that you as a commission will have to take. Then. Um, Mitch will put together a transcript for the bond issue, something that shows all of the different legal proceedings that occurred. Um, that transcript would get approved by the Attorney General in Kansas, and uh, if we stay on schedule, then the closing for the issue would occur at the end of June, and that's when you get your, your funds for the, for the issue. Um, so that's sort of the process that you'll be going through. This isn't the final step. That won't occur until June 13th, but 
it is a pretty big step because when we return to you on the 13th, we'll have gone through all of this and you'll have in, in hand the final bond structure, the final interest rates, and you'll be expected to adopt that resolution. So if you have questions, really probably now or is the time to, to be asking those. Okay, if you take and it says county provides list of projects and cost information, we haven't officially put them out yet. I mean, they are out, but they haven't come back yet. So um, you would have to have that closed, that part closed before you. Yes and no. Um, okay. We have a lot of flexibility. So what I have before me today is what I call the project authorization resolution. In that, there are four projects which the county has previously identified as their yes. candidates for funding. That's correct. You do not have to have your bids taken in final costs on those projects known. What we do in this uh, resolution is identify that yes, the county has specified that these four projects that it wants to fund all or a portion the cost of which with proceeds of the bonds. So that resolution will allow you to spend bond proceeds on those four projects. Let's say for the sake of the conversation three weeks from now, oh, what about this project? We might wanna add this in there. We can do that with a supplemental resolution or as part of the bond resolution but we would just have to know by for certainly by the time the bonds are actually going to be sold, which project which projects the county's going to spend funds on if there is anything different than these four projects <coughs> already identified. And even though we authorize this, what if they decide one of the four projects they're not going to use bond proceeds? Yeah. That's okay. Right. It? This is, thank you. That's that's exactly right. What this gives you the the projects that you can spend the proceeds on, and they can be mixed and matched and allocated however you want between these four projects. So you want to take two of them out and just spend the proceeds on the other ones, that's just fine. And this is based on that, uh, the action and the vote that you all took on, I think it was, it was either April 25th or April 29th, right. mm -hmm. that you said those are the projects to put into the bond resolution. And so that's the ones you put in. Um, the other thing I, I wanted to talk before you consider the, um, the two resolutions in front of you, on the other sheet I wanted to um, focus on, um, what this, um, one of the things that we're going to have to determine is um, how long you want the bond issue to run for, how many years of, do you want it to be paid for. And the, um, I've put together a sheet that attempts to estimate for a $5 million bond issue, and it, that's the number we're at, right? That's the principal, okay. Um, if you look at this table here, you'll see lengths of the bond issue. I've, I've given examples here between five years and 15 years repayment schedules. Um, the interest right now on the bonds would probably be for a five-year issue, and these are probably a little bit high estimates of rate. Um, a five-year issue would be about 3%, and a 15-year issue would be about 3.5%. You can see what the annual bond payment is there on that yellow box on the left. And then right next to that, in the yet second yellow box on the right there, you can see what the estimated mill levy would be. Um, so we need to make a decision, how long do you want to borrow the money for? Um, keep in mind that I, I, I've given an example from, from five years to 15 years here. Um, keep in mind, you also need to think about the, the anticipated useful life of the improvements. Are these, are these projects going to last 15 years? If they aren't, how long will they last? Um, you don't want to borrow the money for a significantly longer period of time than, than the projects will would anticipate you know, having a useful life of. And, and Mitch would have to, Mitch would weigh in about your ability legally to even borrow for a longer period of time than, than the useful life of the projects. What will the impact of the Fed's uh, interest rate hikes, hike and coming hikes, have on these rates? You, you know, I think, um, I think the, right now at least it seems like the, the increase in interest rates has slowed down somewhat. I mean, er, earlier this year, rates were jumping up considerably each week. That seems to have somewhat slowed down. Um, although last Thursday and Friday, there were some bump ups. I, you know, I think right now that um, a lot of the anticipated, what, what's happened in interest rates and what 
people expect to happen over the remainder of the year is already sort of baked in build these yeah. rates. Yeah, they, they might go up a little bit more, um, but I don't think they're going to. If, if the Fed announces that they're going to increase rates half a percent at their next meeting, these rates aren't going to go up half a percent. I think these rates are already anticipate um, that. Mr. Becker, what are your thoughts on length of term? Well, I mean, we're looking at road projects. I don't know that, I mean, first of all, I think you need to determine how long, how long is that road going to last. You don't want to have a, you don't want to have a 10 year bond at, a, at seven years, that road is bad. I think it, but you also don't, you do, I mean, you talk, you talk about people that's, on fixed income that may have a hundred thousand dollar home with what what inflation's hitting everybody with that's not going to be very popular <laughs> for you the irs and you know very other various other agencies will produce schedules you know the estimated useful life of capital assets depending on the scope of the paving improvements. I mean, if you're going all the way down to putting in a new base and going and building a whole new road, that's usually looks like 10 to 15 years. You know, if you're just doing some yeah. asphalt over the top, right. obviously that's going to break down sooner than later. But I would say just from what the schedules that we see and what's out there, 10 to 15 years is pretty reasonable in terms of the useful life of paving improvements. And to me, that's a million dollar question with Indigo. Because we've been told by professionals we don't have a base problem, but yet the average person that drives across that daily says we have a base problem. <laughs> and I, it's hard for me to dispute that other than saying, well, we've had all these tests and they say no. But <laughs> yeah, I would, yeah, I would certainly defer to your project engineers or you know consulting engineers or folks with the county who right. have a better understanding. Of, you know what's the what's the useful life of this yeah. project? Commissioner Dalton's on the way. Should Bryce be part of this conversation? Well, we're talking about finance. Yeah, this is what is. I don't want to link the room. Well, I think we spent about an hour on that last week. Okay. Yeah. And that's that's what I went down to just to see because what's the first few words you hear out of your bond people is cover what you think you get. And I didn't get a good answer because I was told I couldn't be, the engineer can't guarantee anything. I mean, Bryce, we're taking a guess at what's underneath there, except we've had the drill samples and things like that. So I think we have to make that decision how long we do want to run it uh, to, to both to do what Kent's saying, to both appease the people, the five-year payout here, and then maybe the 10-year, you, what, you, what you're doing to, to the taxpayer too. So, uh, but I couldn't get no answer on guarantees on anything, and, and I, I don't know. It's, it's a question. It's a good question. It sounds like 10 years the, would be the popular or most yeah, If you do, um, that's your middle of the road. Yeah, yeah. That's, you're, that's well, you're, as Mitch said, you look at your projects, um, you know, what we're doing on Kansas, uh, you know, that's going to be a 15 year. Uh, you're, lo you're looking at concrete, right? Yeah. You're looking at concrete. You know, yeah, 20, so, 20 to 30. Basically, half of the, the bond project would be going toward a 15 year project. So, blend that together with a couple of your other projects, and I think you come up with a 10 year. Can, so, can we split those bonds out? And, X number of dollars, 10 years, X number of dollars, 15 if you years. Want, if you want okay. to, we could do something. That, that, that what we would do is um, we would create two separate amortization schedules. Um, and then for purposes of selling the bonds, we would blend them together. But right. but you could still show that, okay, these this portion of the bond issue was, was repaid, these projects were repaid over 15 years, and these projects were repaid over seven or 10 or whatever you wanted. So we, we could do something like that. The, um, the schedule here, um, if, if you do feel like you need a little bit of extra time to make this decision, you know, if you want to take another week or so, um, we could still adhere to this schedule. You don't have to make that decision today. If you feel comfortable doing it, great. If you did want another week, we could 
um, the schedule to accommodate that. So really the, fir the first question you're asking us is the length of term. Is that the yeah. understanding that correct? Yeah. And, and again, you don't need that to pass the project resolution or the sale resolution. We will need that, though, uh, in order to publish a notice of bond sale, which would occur in a, a couple, three weeks. What's the level of comfort with the commission at 10 years? I'm fine. I was always looking at the 8 to 10. I think the biggest concerns are that we fix it right. Mm -hmm. and it's not about finance. It's not the finance. It's so, I mean, we know we got we know we got a fix for it. Right. That's where I'm at. Um, right. How they get fixed is not a question with these guys. Right. So we've got two in favor of 10. Mr. Becker? I'd be in the probably the 8 to 9 range. I'd, I hate to go all the way up 10, but here. Commissioner Crowfoot? Seven. Okay, Commissioner Talkie? I'm going nine or 10 at the most, at the maximum. Okay, so we're in the uh, like maximum. Eight, eight, nine. <laughs> Ballpark? It's a long time down there, guys. Yeah. Okay. If you think we could have get down to seven, maybe, uh, might be a, and not. Not go, you know, t too much per household. Why? Looking at fifty-eight oh eight on a seven. Yeah. <coughs> you're also looking at tying up more of your your assets that you're not going to be able to do other roads during that time. That's that's the backside that we face all the time. You know, so if you, the longer you look at spreading it out, the more funds you have to do the secondary roads. Correct. And they're going to need it. And they're going to need it. They need it now. The, the, something, the new issue here is splitting the bonds. Um, to do that, if the Kansas project set out at a certain total for 15 years and then the rest of them come back to that 8 to 10 year range. So if we did that, <coughs> it would, would that affect the mill levy? Um, yeah, it would, um, and I'm trying to think, it probably falls somewhere in between. Yeah. Would, yeah. So if, if you, it would probably be, if you, if you split half of it 10 years and half of it 15 years, just to keep things simple. I think if you were to look at the schedule then and look at something, split the difference 12 and a half years, the payment would be somewhere in that range. So you'd be talking about a, a mill levy increase of, you know, maybe 3.1 mills, or maybe what would that be, $35. A year. But I'm just ballparking it there. Are there additional costs displaying it? No. No, it's oh, really, it's very easy to do. Yeah. It's it's done frequently. We're not there wouldn't be like a separate issue of bonds there would just be two different amortization tables included in the same Okay, bond so it issue. is a but simple bidders right. will be good, you know, we'll see one bond right. issue. I it'll all be behind the scenes. My, my issue I just didn't want to complicate it. Yeah. As much as we'd like to charge you for another bond issue. We want to <laughs> and the reporting. Right. Yeah. Okay. And if we want to make some changes to one of the projects for that, that we don't have road into it today. Yeah, so we've got a lot of options. So okay. even even let's say we go forward with these four projects, issue the bonds, and then two years later you've got some bond proceeds left over and you have another paving project, we can add that to the bond issue after the fact with the excuse me, substitute improvement proceedings. We do that you know, fairly regularly, not all the time, but it's, it's very easy. It's just we would, the commission would take action to identify that it's got some remaining bond proceeds, has another project that it would like to allocate those proceeds to, and then just basically approve that project for a bond issue and then we can add that to the, the issue after the fact. Okay, what's the commission's wish? Do you want to split them up into two, do half at a uh, longer term and half at a shorter term, or do you want to blend them into one mid, mid range? Is that a necessary thing today? We can. Yeah, I think what, what, with the five million. And 
I think what would make I think we're still talking about five million dollars no matter what. I think what would make sense for the purposes of the sale resolution would be to approve the notice of bond sale and substantially the form presented, but also to authorize the chairman to uh, approve the final final notice of bond sale, which is the one that will be distributed. So at that point, when we have consensus as to you know what the final uh, the two amortization tables look like and the, and the length of financing, then we can drop that in the notice of bond sale, have it approved by the chairman, and go on about our way. Looks to me like you'd split it two thirds, 10, 10 and one third, 15. That's a so. lot longer than what the commission was talking about two minutes ago. <laughs> well, <laughs> one was not more over seven years. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're talking about the Kansas project. If you take that as a percent of the bond issue. So you could do that over 15 years and then the balance of it over seven years if you want to. I'm, I'm still more in favor of staying in the 8 to 10 range. Overall, flexibility wise, let's say we get a cost share somewhere here and it's more over than over there, and we're still trying to spend the money for the one that we get a cost share on. We can still move it to the other side when we start locking it up and which projects go to the 15, which ones go to the, the other, ties some finances up. Well, I think still have flexibility. Yeah, you, you have you have flexibility. You can move around like once once the this is for the bond purposes, not for necessarily for your internal accounting purposes. But once the bonds come in, once you have five million dollars from the proceeds of the bonds. You can whack that up between any of the projects, however you would like to do so. And then in terms of your repayment, um, that money is coming from your, I mean, it's gonna come from your bond and interest fund, which is the source of the revenues are all property taxes for this issue, right? So it doesn't, that's not segregated by project, that, that just goes into the bond and interest fund. And obviously the, the most important consideration is do we have enough to pay our debt service on the bonds? So. Um, and the, it's just a matter of budgeting and setting your bill up as part of your budget process every year, obviously. Yeah, the, 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 how you amortize the bonds, be it all at the same length or some at 15, some at 10, some whatever, um, that's really sort of an internal sort of um, um, policy or practice. It, it doesn't actually tie you to um, spending a certain amount of money on a certain type of project. Commissioner Gold. Can you take that $5 million for a 10-year project and tell me what I'm going to pay a month or a year? That's um, all the way over there on the left or the right. Yeah, that forty two dollars. That's the annuals, okay, right? Yeah. Okay. So the annual debt service would be about five hundred and ninety six thousand dollars on the bonds, which would equate to three point seven mils or about forty two dollars and seventy eight cents for a hundred thousand dollar home. Okay, what I dealt with for the last of your project up there, Dave, on three thirtieth, yep, uh, from Tampa in was two hundred and twenty thousand. So now you're dealing with 600,000, three times that. And, and that does cut your other roads um, that you want to work on. It cuts it quite a bit, unless you raise a specific place. We was trying to do it all out of road and bridge money before. And so. Well, it doesn't look like we're going to get to a consensus on how to do that today. How about if we uh, take the recommendation of bond council and do the uh, resolution to proceed and then authorize the chairman on the split uh, after the rest of the commission's had time to come to consensus? That way we can at least move forward with the bond issue. Comments? Oh, we are going to raise a mill levy. That, that's something that'll go into the budget process. Yeah. What they're doing is illustrating, okay. illustrating yeah. the cost. Yeah. So, so yeah. currently, you have, you know, you had your initial <clears throat> discussions were to pay at least the first few of the bond payments out of the capital improvement fund, which is general, it's general fund money that's been transferred into the capital improvement fund. So, uh, whether we have to pay that into debt service and pay it out of that fund, however that works. I mean, initially you had talked about doing that for a period of time and then over time raising the mill levy slightly to make a, a difference. But, it, but I don't know if how far, you know, you want to try to stretch that because that's also where you're going to be paying your other road projects from. Understood. Okay. Yeah, so I, well, 
but is the ratings that we're going to receive from S and P on those going to have any effect or tweaking of these numbers? <laughs> those already assume that um, you receive a rating of about an A plus from Standard and Poor's. Um, That's what I'm saying. What if they came in at A? It, it will. It, if it comes in, that's just one notch lower, that would affect the, the interest rate by maybe 0.1 or 0.2%. It, it's not gonna really significantly, it, as short as this is, if this were a 20 or 30 year bond issue, the change in the interest rate would impact the payment more, but if, if it's a, we're talking about a 10 year issue, a 10th of a percent or so in the interest rate isn't gonna really materially affect these, these numbers. Okay to make a comment about the amortization. Yes, please. So, if there's no real benefit to ch to doing different amortization schedules for the different parts and pieces of this, it would be simpler if we could just do one amortization schedule uh, for the bookkeeping, the bond payments, and all of that. I'm just putting that out there. I mean, we'll do whatever you all say, but um, if there's unless there's a real benefit to s switching it all up, uh, the keeping it simple is. Awfully nice. Well, we've got two on keeping it simple. Is the rest, rest of the commission for? I still don't think we're going to get to a consensus on these today. Both are simple. <laughs> we got three for simple. Well, but then we still got to come up with a Yeah, but is that giving us the best, you know, the most logical outcome, I guess? Well, I mean, it really comes down. I mean, if you were going to do 10 year on some and 15 on the other, you're really looking at 12 and a half. Then. Yeah, 12 and a half years. You're doing seven or thirteen, that comes out of ten. So. Again, we'll do whatever works the best, or whatever you think is the best. It's just if there's no great benefit to doing it the other way, then keeping it simple. So it's Can we go back to the beginning, where we're asking where everybody fell on average? It. Yeah. We had a seven, eight, nine. Right. We had a <coughs> ten at the latest. Yeah, ten at highest. Where were you? Eight, nine, nine, we ten. So we're sitting right around eight or nine. Yeah, just, just trying to. Yep, I agree. I'd like to bring it to resolution. Uh, I'll go ahead and move forward with a motion. I move to be approved for resolution 2022-13. Uh, resolution authorizing the offer of sale of general obligation bond series 2022A of Marion County, Kansas, in the amount of five million dollars, a nine-year schedule. That was the motion. Is there a second? A second that. Second by Commissioner Crowe for discussion. <coughs> All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried 5 0 after a lot of discussion. That, that was resolution 2022 lucky 13. It's lucky 13. Okay. If I got Is there something in there that has to be updated for the length of time? Uh, no. Can you skip that number? The, <laughs> yeah, the 14. So the, the, the resolution that, that uh, we have basically approves the county to offer its general obligation bonds authorizes um, Stiefel and Gilmore and Bell to prepare the necessary offering documents and authorizes the chairman to approve the notice of bond sale which the final version of which is which will go out to the investors and be then be bid upon and so um, if there's some tweaks and some other items that come in after the fact we can accommodate for that in the okay. notice bond sale. very good appreciate that yeah. okay but the resolution that we just did was that supposed to be the offer the authorizing the offering for sale well, it, or it, was it supposed to be the project that was the offering for sale that's the one we did so we right. can do the other one after okay. the fact that's, yeah. fine. that's, that's, okay. that's all right that's i went to the fine. first one that was in the back of so that was so does this one particular one have as um anything in about the timeline it does not right? it does not okay. that will have to just be so we can go ahead and from the governing body we can sign it as is yes what i was trying mm -hmm. to get down to Okay, so here's the signature page. And the other resolution would be 12 or 14? 14. 14. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, the other resolution is straightforward, just authorizes the proceeds of the bonds to be spent on those four projects, as we discussed before. So I think we we kind of covered that one. We'd be happy to ask them, or answer any other questions, but uh, that one is, like I said, pretty straightforward. For what it's worth, um, the project authorization resolution also includes the reimbursement authority. So to the extent that, hey, we like this bid, we want to get started, the county could start spending available funds on the project and then reimburse itself those funds when the proceeds of the bonds come in. That's included in the project authorization resolution as well. So if you get a contractor or a bid, you know, that's, hey, we can start next week and we're ready to go, then that option's there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. I'm a little optimistic, sorry. Start <coughs> Started all this, I kind of thought something like that would happen. But right now, it seems like we'll be we'll be done in June, and it'll be next year. All right, then I have the the next resolution. I move we approve resolution number 2022-14, a resolution declaring it necessary to authorize the payment of the cost of paving improvements to roads in Marion County, Kansas, and providing for the issuance of general obligation bonds to pay the costs thereof. Is there a second? Second. Second, Commissioner Gary. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried 5 0. Great. Well, we will um, proceed. We'll move ahead with everything. And I know we've already got a rating call scheduled in a few weeks. Um, and we'll keep you posted. To the extent interest rates change significantly, I'll probably send a little memo over to team and clean up with you. Well, thank you. We appreciate thank you. your yeah. information and answering questions. Um, provided a lot of comfort, I think, to the commission and being able to respond to the constituents. Uh, Which I know the county uh, doesn't issue a lot of debt, so this process is a little bit unusual. So that's uh, kind of what. Mitch and I are here for to make sure you understand what you're doing and guide you through the process. Very good. Thank you, Dave. Thank you all. Thanks. Second page. Yeah, probably go ahead and do that. Oh, okay. Um, we, can we get a, a motion vote to authorize the engagement? It was actually the sale resolution already. Oh, it's already done. Yeah. Okay, so all we need is a signature. It's yeah. authorized. Oh, actually, no, we're going to have another action. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to require you to do that on the Yeah, so that would just be the same. When did you come down the leg? Not, well, a tailwind, so that was terrible. Oh, right. we'll, we'll find a little bit. You know, Dave and I are in opposite directions. Yep. Well, I've got a, a rental car. A lot of times our company might, wants us to rent cars when we're driving. They gave me one of these Toyota 4Runners, and it's got a little warning light that says sway. <laughs> sway. <laughs> sway warning. I, yeah, that was going on all day today. So. I do not see that. Yeah, I don't see that either. It was a little rough on, on Saturday. I went all the way out to Ulysses and come back. Oh yeah, boy, it just right. kept catching me the whole way. I can't imagine. I got a V8 taken back down, so the wind doesn't bother me too much, but I have to stop the gas about halfway down. <laughs> yeah, but it's not dropping in. Yeah, I think that trip out there cost me a whole 500 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you all. Oh, excuse me. It's filled up three times. <laughs> Crazy. All right. How are you, sir? It was pointed out I didn't uh, go through agenda approval, and I think we will have some changes to the agenda. Uh, coming up next at 1 o'clock is the county appraisal, appraisal Nikki 115 in powerhouse. Representative Barker's here. Road and bridge is going to need significantly more time. We're going to try to work that in. Are there any other changes to uh, the agenda? Did you want to add a, an executive session on for the yes. department head evaluations? That's why I tell you things so I. But I forget to remind me. Um, at the very end, we'll have executive session for our <laughs> reviews, uh, so we can review the written, the 
evaluations before we start meeting with department heads next week. So I need one under the county councilor for uh, land acquisition. Okay, and an executive session under county councilor for land acquisition. Anything else to add to this agenda? Okay, very good, Nikki. We're ready for you. and they're about halfway through with each township. Um, we will also do summit the city of Ramona and then the city of Marion this year. Um, um, we had 86, 20, 22 appeals on property valuations, two canceled and one was a no show. Um, we certified real property to the clerk last week. Um, I'll be working on getting the NR information to her hopefully by the end of this week. Um, and then Michelle and I will certify personal property and oil and gas next week. Um, there was a 4.7% increase in appraised values. Um, that does include exempt property. So, um, and there was 5745700 dollars in new construction <laughs> last year <laughs> that's good news yeah um and then i have several neighborhood revitalization applications that um they've never received a part three on um and they've been complete for a while um, we've called several times um, i guess just looking for your guys' opinion on what we need to do to like send letters saying you've made direct contact voicemails with several voicemails don't get a call back um, were these submitted after construction is done before before they yeah so they applied like they should have right. um after construction was complete they're supposed to turn a part three in right. um you know our staff has been to the property it's been completed some of them have been completed for years two years <laughs> yeah, I would say send a letter with a deadline if they don't respond by the deadline then they forfeit the ability to be in the program is okay. that appropriate as long as they okay. as long as they apply to how, how's that, I so. how's that going to affect what they do what everybody does though because it's supposed to start right then when you start it doesn't start until they get to so, part three then. yeah the rebate doesn't start until construction is 100 percent complete and the part three has to be turned in before we turn it in to receive to the clerk and then to the treasurer yep. for them to get the refund back. There's no time limit set by the government? Uh, it's supposed, they're supposed to turn it in 15 days after construction is complete. <laughs> so two years is a little overdue. Yeah. 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 I'm just, there's, yeah. <laughs> so would you suggest giving them 30 days from the letter? I mean, I think you can do about whatever you want, but something reasonable would be 30 days. That, that sound commission you okay with that yeah I, yeah, I, I guess that. Nikki we'd suggest you send them a letter if they have 30 days to respond if not then they forfeit the, the ability to be a part of the neighborhood revitalization cases are closed mm -hmm. clean it off your books so like certified letter then it does not have to be I, it's nice if we can if we know they're going to pick it up okay um, I've, I've done it both ways where I'll send it in regular mail so I know they got it uh, mm -hmm. And also by certified case, we just let that sit and it comes back to us after the 10 day term. Uh, so a lot, a lot of times we'll do, we do both. Yeah. Okay. So would you recommend that yeah, you do both? So. Yeah, so good. send a regular answer. It's just okay. extra good. How many of these did you say? There's 17. Wow. 17. Wow. Uh, they probably go, some probably go back more than a couple of years. Yeah, get a clean up. Yeah. Okay. That's not the important piece. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, then there's others that's really important to them and then they, they didn't file correctly. 
Um, we plan this summer to talk with Augmentum and they run the AS400 program and when tax bills go out on personal property, it will, um, it kind of just populates what the item is and a lot of times it will put in like an exempt trailer but it's really a truck like a 1620 truck and that causes a lot of confusion for the taxpayer um so this summer we're going to try to get with as 400 to try to get what is actually on the tax bill listed on the tax bill <laughs> um which will hopefully clear up a lot of questions from tax sense um, and then i have an updated job description for the administrative specialist one. Um, we believe it got changed when, since I was doing the front desk duties and doing field work, we, we think it got changed to include field work duties at one time and never got changed back. So we were just wanting to kind of take the field work out of the administrative position. So those are the changes that we made. And I guess it needs approval for to be said. Do we have a copy? Um, the copy is on the table there for you. Um, the, you have the uh, okay. proposed and the old, or like the updated one and the old. Okay. So, what I read through, I, okay. I think it's acceptable. Okay, so I'll go motion. ahead and make a motion to approve. Okay, the changes. Motion by Commissioner Gehring to approve the change of administrative position. Is there a second? Second. Second, Commissioner Crowfoot. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those nay. Motion carried by a vote. Thank you, Nikki. Um, that was a little extra time. So I read through it. Appreciate it. We trust you. Our part time summer home will be back next week. I don't, I don't know if I can ask this in open session or this team that you don't know. Does it involve person? Um, are you asking something specific to their performance or? Okay. Just letting you guys know. Then. Informative. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Then you open session. Yeah. Okay. Then he'll be back in a few days. <laughs> <laughs> he's, not, he's not for one day, but he'll be here. And then. Okay. Same person you had last summer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, no. Yes. Less training. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we did hire someone for the front desk, but she will not start until late June. Um, she's going to Southern California, but she has family here, so. Um, and I do, there's one of my employees last day is tomorrow. What's that? One of my employees last day is tomorrow. I cannot voice out again. <laughs> I think that's all I have. You had much success in uh, attracting applicants over the last few months? Six months? Not much. It's been a struggle. Mm -hmm. All right. That has been something common in those campus. <laughs> FYI, it's not just Marion. Yes. This is most businesses. <laughs> yeah. Not the counting, it's everything. So yeah. Keep your eye out. Look for automation that helps. Yes. Hey, I might be able to help you. Yeah. <laughs> automation that helps. <laughs> then, you don't have, it, huh? then you don't have salaries. So I did not realize we would have quite so many people, so we can share, hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I can share. Yeah. We got copies. Uh, we might, I think we already have the electronic copy. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we are good. Thank you. Would you like, would you like to go to your house? Yeah. And then if you want to go to your even non Okay. Thank you. Sure it is. Oh, look at you guys. Okay. I do have a quick presentation to kind of go through everything. So if you don't mind, can I share my screen? Mm -hmm. Um. Are you locked into the meeting? I am. Okay. <laughs> Maybe just once. 
<laughs> Not very long ago, actually. Share your screen. Uh, yeah, I thought I cut it up. I'll try it again. Let me see if I need to do something. There else. you go. It's up there now. Uh, I don't think it does. Down a reminder. Uh, can you click the? Are you controlling it? No. No, no I'm. No. One of it's just on a lag. We'll give it a second. Okay, there we go. So yeah, we're on a little bit of a lag. So just give you a quick reminder of what we talked about last time. Your last project was in 2020 in the spring. Once it gets cut up here, you guys were at the three inch for uh, four, four um, urban areas and then six inch ortho and nine inch oblique. There we go. So that's what you had last time. You can see the difference between the six and nine is, is quite a big difference. Um, and with that, we were had a total payment for a project of 109409 and payments of 36469 over three years. And as another reminder, I asked Nikki to kind of bring the facts of how it's used within the county again. So would you mind sharing that real quick? Because it was quite impressive. More, more dead trees. <laughs> <laughs> So our office uses it regularly. We use it um, when they do re-inspections, um, building permits. Um, Debbie in our office updates it um, and maintains the website. Um, the City of Marion uses it. It's a great aid for a lot of what they do. They use it to look up subdivisions road and street projects and measurements. Fire department uses it for planning. Planning and zoning and utilities use it for property lines and setbacks. And the police department uses it for parking and planning for big events and other planning operations. Um, the city of Hillsboro fire chief and building inspector says he uses it almost daily for zoning property lines, code enforcement, site plans for proposed planning. Um, he's also used it for planning and zoning hearings. He can find who owns a property within 200 feet of a project, mail out letters, and the road department uses it regularly to locate projects and measure projects. And he uses the overhead view. Um, the city of Gosselin uses it. Um, I'm assuming the same reasons I never did hear back from them. Um, planning and zoning uses it as a secondary when their GIS is down. Um, and they use it for the history to see changes on properties, ads or demos, since it has several years of um, imagery. And Brandon stated that the images are more clear on, G on pictometry than they are on their system. And emergency management uses it when planning large events. Um, 
like the planning of the motorcycle race So what we talked about last time was bringing up that nine inch to six inch on your obliques. And what that's gonna do is, you know, make all those people's jobs and lives better. So once it catches up here, I've got two options. Come on. While it's loading. Um, the two options I have for are for bringing up all that, again, nine inches, six inch county wide in the uh, rural areas. And what that does is bring the, the total cost to 135,429 with a yearly payment of 45,143. And that is the top paper clip that you should have. And that will be the identical for the next project. The reason that you see two projects up here is because adding the, the next project and amending the contract allows me to give the county more of a discount, which we will show right here. So if you take your paper clip off and you go down to the numbers on the next page, or run through what each line item is, and it will load up there once it catches up. But there, the quantities on the imagery is in square miles. So we have 988 square miles altogether between six inch and three inch. We have two future view advanced trainings, which that is a training that I believe the GIS guy and um, people in Mickey's office will, will benefit from. She's talking about she's got a couple new mappers and that'll just help you know get them up to speed using our products and you know in the appraising world. So we were able to discount that basically two for one at 50% for two seats. And then the next thing we have is 53 square miles of reveal essentials property, and that is the three inch. And so with that being said, I'm able to offer a 10% discount on a 400 per square mile listing price for $19,080. And I'm sorry, I skipped one of the things, and that's the Pictometry Connect. That's the way that they do it online and integrate into all their systems. And that was able to get a 75% a, a discount for about 1650. So jumping down to the Reveal Essentials neighborhood, that list price is 160, and I'm able to give you guys a 25% discount for 112, 200 dollars, and that will be in the rural areas rather than a six and nine combo. The next line item we have here is Cryptometry Early Connect, and what this does is as we're flying, it will allow. Um, the images for everybody to be used or to be used countywide as it's being processed before your final delivery so that you know you're not waiting for that 30 to 60 day you know turnaround time before you get the, the final delivery images and then the very last line item there is just the support from our company making sure that they're, everybody's trained that if there's ever a technical difficulty that we are there and accessible to the county so that duplicates into project two at that guaranteed price if this is the route that you were deciding to go and then the very last thing is just then up close to that map that is still stuck here. So any questions on that? No? So just to be clear, what you're what you're showing here, project one is a three year project and you're asking them to do two projects, a second project, which it which would be a total of six years. Which is, it is correct, but that, that next project, that very last one, would not, you don't guys have, you don't have to do it if the budgetary needs are not there. There is a clause in there that says, we can't afford this, you know, we are passing on this project. But what it does is it gives you a guarantee that if you wanted to do that project, it would be guaranteed at that price. Is that a second flight then? Yeah, that would be a second flight. So what we would do is we would amend the, the, this current flight that you guys are up for in renewal to these products, and then we would add another one. You know, contingent on budgetary needs. So you come back in three years, you have the opportunity to say yes or no. Yeah. So just at the same price. At the same price. And do we ever charge as a department for using this? No. 
when we when we first got this product, the the idea and the intent was to charge the other agencies, and I don't think that ever happens. So. Right, like the cities, right. every time they hit it, it's twenty dollars or something. We initially were going to do it as a subscription, but they've gotten used to having it for free, and we've had it for I don't know how long now. What's what the cell phone companies did? They gave you a free phone, but now they charge you. Yeah, well, that's and, up to you all whether you one. want to charge the other agencies or not. But yeah. they, I, right now, they're not being charged. But you got to count how many times everybody hits it. It's actually not paid out of my budget. Paid out of sales tax. Right. So if the commission decides to change that pricing structure and charge those other entities, that's a commission decision. You can do at any time. Right. At this point, let's focus on. Uh, we well, yeah, I'm just asking. Yeah. But down the road, we can we can reconsider that. But there is a mechanism. Yeah. Yeah. There's yes, a mechanism there is. To do. Any other questions on what was our last billing? Hundred nine five, uh, basically. Hundred nine. Hundred and nine. Well, for the total project, the yearly payment was was around thirty-five thousand. I've had another slide if it ever catches up to show you that. <laughs> but it's it's in the packet. It's in the packet. What's the second budget proposal? Uh, that that project two. Oh, the second. We're, that's the next thing. After let's, we get, let's get through this one first. Yeah. Okay. What's the commission's feeling on the optometry proposal? Are you going to fly it this year? That's up to you. We could do it the fall of this year, or we could do it spring of, of 23. Basically, as soon as the leaves fall, yeah. whether that's late November, early December, we start, and then we basically go until you know a little bit before this time the following year. So we expire here this month. Uh, don't pay attention to that. Okay. okay are there other uh, questions? Before we get to a vote, let's get to the second. Oh, okay. Because this th this kind of ties into everything. All right. Thank you. Um, he can be aware. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to make sure everybody has all the information. Um, so that's just imagery. That is imagery conference and the, the tools that you need to to do the baseline of what everybody's doing: the engineering, the appraising, this everything from the city perspective. Last time we were here, somebody asked, and I think it might have been you, about Sorry. getting a building outline for every structure within the county. <laughs> but that being said, that is called a change, a change finder project. And what we do is we take one year of imagery and we compare it. We outline everything within 150 square feet and then we compare it to the next year of imagery and see what's changed and it falls into five four categories. <coughs> so I'm going to try to get through this because it's going to take a while to catch up. But what we do is imagine in 2020 we had, we had it on the left side. And there is just a run of the mill spec house, 1600 square foot. Well, somebody bought it and now we're flying in 2023. And they put an addition with a covered patio and a deck on there, you know, something else on there. What this does is it comes and outlines it as in 2020 and then 2023 and outlines the changes. And you can do changes in all different perspectives of was it changed 25%? Was it changed, you know, different windows? Not only does it do changes, it does brand new things. So you got, you know, new subdivisions going in. Um, demolished, existing, no change, or unknown. So you get five different categories this falls into. That being said, um, and then you can filter it down into, you know, further. So say Miss Nikki has five appraisers out in the uh, field and she wants um, each appraiser to be in charge of, you know, this township and you can break it down into township one for appraiser one and so on and so forth, school districts, whatever. Whatever the GIS data we have in, in counting, we can break it down into manageable sections. And where's... If we had all of that, why would we even send an appraiser out? <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Well, you really, still have to verify, like, you measurement. Yeah. You still have to measure it. So, and that's another good point. The I, IAAO, which is the International um, Association of Appraising Organization, recognizes that um, certain GSDs or resolutions, which goes back to your three inch and six nine, or six inch, is recognized by you know that organization as a clear picture for use for appraising um, we worked really really hard on that to get that you know approved so say Nikki has somebody that just won't you know she knows it's back there she can't get back there and she needs to do the appraising she can use this product to do the exact measurements and say you know they come to the board and they're like well I don't have that back back there and she's like well I've got it here with the square footage and what it is so this is for the guy who builds off the grid <laughs> 
shortage of help, too. I mean, it allows you to mm -hmm. handle some things without having the personnel. Yeah, but you just got through saying you still have to go out and verify. Well, yeah. That's, so where's that saving you anything? You know, Generally, we would like to send someone out there to verify and measure and take pictures, update pictures. It would catch new construction. Like I called Kent last week. Yep. And it's been six years since we've been in a township, and uh, there were several new buildings picked up. So you have a project one and a project two on the target targeted project. Oh, so that this is getting to your, your next packet or next paper clip. So you have project one and project two. So project one you see is a little bit bigger, and that's because you have to go and do the the you know the backlog. You have to take 2020 and outline everything, and then you have to take 2023 and you have to outline everything. So if you were to do that this go around, you know that's the 11,368. But next go around, you already have your baseline outlines from 2023 so you're only doing 2026 so that's why you see that drop in price okay, questions there's not very much really i mean for what you're getting mm -hmm. <coughs> i mean that's and then going forward you can to have a person yeah. i mean and going forward and beyond 2026 it'll be always be comparable to that you know 6500 because you already have your baselines established so your system is good enough so, to, to, to pick up square foot or within 150 square foot yeah so this is what so this is work? this is an overview um if you can see the yellow that's unknown uh this is and this is all an example with the county that's done this the purple is demolished the red is changed the green is new and the gray is existing Because a lot of people see this, and they, it also has supposedly your property lines, and they could be five foot off. I mean, sure. that's, that's a it's quite a bit when you're looking to get down to put a fence up. No, I agree. I agree. And one thing that we always do say is that this is all the the combination of data. So Nikki manages the property lines, and we just upload it. We don't do anything yeah. with this. This is based, you know, we have a, a parcel actually going in and setting points and outlining each building. So it is done to this imagery, whereas the parcel data may be done on different imagery or, a, you know, a different, um, I called it as built when I was in the utility, but property cards, you know, whatever. It's, this is the com combination of all data. So sometimes it doesn't line up exactly. And you, you're right on that. Probably don't, they don't believe it. It's on the paper. It's right here. I, I know it's yeah. right here. Well, and you don't have to make this accessible to public. That's the well, other thing. Well, oh, true, true. This is this is all internal use. If you want to use it on your public website, you can, but it is it's not something that we're going to put out to the public. How's the commission's general feel on the proposal? I think it'd be. I don't. Good. I don't know if. Go ahead, David. We we asked it. I think. Why don't you do better ones? It's popular and it's helpful, but there's no cost benefit analysis with this. All I ever get is price. So I actually. Where's the cost benefit? So this is, I have it right here, a project a dashboard, and I, it's probably too small to see up there, but this county um, had a personal count of 34,000, population of 37,000, and staff in office was five. So comparison years of imagery was 13 to 16. And total structures was 35,713. Total change structures was 4,296. And the current additional assessed value with this was 3.4 million. They were at a 77% um, review at that point in time when this was done. Exactly. Well, yeah, that's, 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 that's what, that's what I'd like to see as part of this. <laughs> that's, that's where your cost well prepared. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying it's good, but prove to me it's worth it. No, I understand. And, and I will say, the first time around, this is where it's like mind-blowing, like, oh, wow, we caught this, you know, this much. The second go around, you've already done most of the county, so it's more of a review, and it sets up her review as far as being quicker, because you can click through and be like, yeah, we got that, that was on last year's tax report. So, the, the, big, the big punch is the first go around, I will say that. Okay. Do we have a motion to approve the uh, budget? Proposal from Eagle View with the 
with the second here. So I can, I've got it all broken down on your options, if we can load <laughs> up here. Um, so again, in 2020, your total was $109,409 with payments of $36,469. So that's where you're at currently. If you do just imagery as it stands, your project one and project two will be 135,429 total with yearly payments of 45,143. Imagery, no change finder. Imagery with change finder will be a 2023 cost of $146,797 with a yearly payment for three years of 48,932. And 2026 would be 141,925 with a yearly payment of 47,308. Very good, and it popped up right on time. Good. So, I make a motion to go with the imagery with the change finder. We have a motion from Commissioner Gehring to proceed with the proposal including the change finder. And so that's 141. It's this one here. It's the one to the right. 146,797. Are, Are you specifying both projects? Both? Yeah, yeah, 2023 and 2026. Is there a second? No, sir. Second, then. Commissioner Crowfoot, second. Uh, further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. 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 Motion carried 3 2. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I do have a thank you slide, but I'll just I'll give up. <laughs> You'll be long later. All right. That being said, um, and I was going to say this before we went to the motions, but we have had noticed that price increases are coming. So with this, sure. I think you're smart because you're locked, you're locked in for the next six years. That's a good okay. after the first change finder comes through. We'll Re reassess. Be able to, well, no, we'll be able to show that it, wasn't, it was money well spent. Yeah. Well, All right. Well, I will send this for contract. I'll have to go through our legal department. Are we wanting an amendment or a fresh contract? I would say for the state and having to go through all the procedures amendment would be smarter. You just find to do it as an amendment. You're not changing that much materially. Okay. All right. All right. I will send that to my legal and in a couple weeks I'll have a contract. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Commissioner, you're running about half an hour behind schedule. <laughs> so, is your meeting? <laughs> you're And I was doing very good at keeping you guys on track. Representative Baker, I hate to ask you, but are, do you have another commitment? That, uh, give me a time. I may have to run over to uh, the shirt. Okay. Uh, be 15 minutes? 15 minutes would be great. I'll just run upstairs to the district court. And see some okay. Right Appreciate it. Thank uh, you. Sorry about that. And I'll find I know you're after. getting some work done on. I was ready. Pretty good. 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 Good to see you, man. Yes. Take care. Excuse me. Hello. Come on in. Here. Come on in. Here. Come on in. Here. Come on in. Here. Come on Anybody, anybody that's going to speak wants to sit over there for the online. So. Okay, you go first. All right, I'll go first. Welcome. Hi, my name is Gail Taylor Ford, and I'm the executive director and owner of Therapy Services, and I have outpatient substance abuse treatment programs in Coffee County in Burlington since 2005, and in Emporia since 2017. And I have partnered with Melissa Landis, and I am president of the board for Empowered House Ministries. And what that is, it's a recovery home for women. We're located in Emporia, and any woman who is um, in recovery from addiction or wanting to be in recovery from addiction, they could be in treatment. It could, they could move in right before they start treatment, or they could be done with treatment and needing help getting on their own two feet. Um, and we opened in February, and we've been having wonderful success, and we have to actually serve the person from the county, so we wanted to come and let you know um, how we also affect your county as well, and let you know that we are available to your county. And so I'm going to let Melissa give you stats and numbers and and all those details. And I'll step aside. Great, thank you. Yeah, I'm going to put you in charge of passing out some paperwork. Okay. Um, my name is Melissa Landis, and uh, just to kind of quickly tell you about what brought me here is back in 2018, my daughter was a drug addict, 
And as I was interacting with her doing what we call normal mom duty, um, I really started to see addicts up close and personal as real people with obviously some very serious real problems. But then when I look in the mirror, I know I've got serious problems too. Um, and what we start to see is often they have access to a ton of resources in regards to mental health and in regards to recovery and addiction therapy, addiction treatment, that whole gamut of services, but they're missing the housing piece. Um, often what happens is the courts or even something that they do on their own because they know they need the treatment, they will head off to a rehab program. And a rehab is, is inpatient, if you will, services. Um, that's usually 28 to 30 days. And then guess what? They're coming right back to our communities and right back to our counties um, and then they're trying to figure out, they've got all these newfound things that they've learned, but they're trying to apply it in that same drug infested environment. Um, and so oftentimes they fail. Um, or they're going off to reintegration, and again they're coming back. Or they're going off to jail, um, and then they're coming right back. And so really what it amounts to is they've got all these access to resources, but they need that one central place to call home. Um, as I have been working with these young ladies, I have seen them living in places where they shouldn't be living. Um, I have seen some living in vehicles. I've seen some men in particular um, living in garages. Um, I've seen them living without electricity. I've seen them living without plumbing. I've seen them living without a toilet. Um, so when you've got all those things going on, I, I've often asked myself, if I woke up in that sort of situation, would I be able to pull myself out? when they literally don't have electricity. Um, so that's really um, back in 2018 is kind of where I started um, becoming aware of all of this. And then in 2020, um, we sat, actually one of the young ladies said, I got this Gail Taylor Ford person you need to talk to. And so Gail and I hooked up um, and obviously brought in that full board so that we could establish a 501c3 organization. We're a nonprofit. And like Gail said, our focus is safe, stable housing but then also secondarily addressing all the other pieces that they need. Um, so that means following through with them, making sure that they're accessing all of those community resources, um, making sure that they've got good solid peer support and life skill training. Um, some of the joys that I've had in the last couple months is literally sitting down with somebody that when they came, they said they knew how to make ramen noodles. They said that was the extent of their cooking and to see her make lasagna and the pride and the joy, but more importantly, the hope um, in her face is, is really what we're all about. So um, one, as, as Ms. Gale said, one of those young ladies that came to us came from your county, but I wanted to give you some numbers and some stats on exactly what this population looks like. Um, their average age is 36. 70% of them are unemployed. 70% of them are on some form of corrections. So drug court, probation, community, community corrections, bond supervision, all of those various programs. And I've been in touch with all of those officials to let them know that we're here um, and that we, have a, we can be a resource for your counties. 40% um, of them are minorities. In some of these numbers, their average income for the last year is $6,010, right? Th these, are, these are people that really need some serious help. 80% of felonies, 70% of mental health, 40% um, of them have no GED or high school education. 40% of them are homeless, meaning they are literally sleeping in a place that's not designed for humans to sleep. And 40% of them are precarious, precariously housed, which really means they don't know where they're sleeping next week. So um, that's kind of the broad overview. So I'm gonna let Miss Ashley talk a little bit and then I'll come back and talk a little bit about what specifically brings me here in front of y'all. Try not to be as long-winded as me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm Ashley Lewis. Um, I'm an addict from Marion County, Marion, Kansas, and also from Harrington, Kansas. Um, I was brought to Empower House Ministries through, I got clean on my own and lived in an environment with no electricity, improper housing, um, I stayed in a garage. Um, anyways, Joseph Forbes got me in touch with Melissa Linus and Gail Ford and um, moved me to Empower House Ministries, which saved my life. I was headed down a really bad road between using, dealing, robbing, stealing, anything and everything on my record. 
it has kept me out of prison. It has led me to sober living. Um, my addiction was the number one problem in my life. And today I live in a community on my own with my significant other. And that is all due to Empire House Ministries. I had nothing when I went there and now I have an entire life there. That's all I got. You are fabulous. Thank you, my dear. Um, and so what we see like, in the case of <coughs> Ashley is this is about giving them the support and the hope that they need to pick themselves up um, and ultimately to become self-sufficient, so come back and start contributing to society through employment and all of those sorts of things. Um, so from a funding perspective, let me tell you where we've been. Um, we have focused in on the special alcohol funds. How familiar are you all with those? Pretty familiar? Okay. I brought you, Ms. Gail, I brought you more paperwork. Um, I brought you a copy of the state statutes, but essentially the state statutes say, uh, this is liquor by the drink taxes, it, when it's collected, it then goes off to the state, comes back to your county for distribution. Um, a third goes to uh, Special Parks and Rec, a third to the general, and a third to that special alcohol fund. And on the back side, you'll see, um, and I did do some highlighting. Um, in the middle of the back side, you'll see that where that money's supposed to go. Um, it is for drinking, drugs, smoking, education, cessation, or treatment. So um, we have been successful with special alcohol funds in Coffee County in February, um, in Lyon County as of a week ago, and are currently approaching several other counties based on our service area and based on where these ladies are coming from. So. Um, we are requesting an appropriation or an allocation out of that special alcohol fund to continue forward with our existing operations. I know I'm a fast talker and I'm sorry. Um, anybody have any questions for me? Commissioners. Um, we need to disperse ours right now to where it ends. Uh, currently, FACT is, is FACT. administering all of our special all, alcohol all. funds, and they're u being utilized for primarily prevention. Yeah. We're also funding uh, treatment through Prairie View. Yes, those are, those are great places. Um, and on the first side, what we need to look at is, particularly when you talk about those youth and the schools and the education, yeah. that's huge, because if y'all can keep them from ever getting in that position in the first place, it keeps them from coming to us. Um, and keep them clean and sober to begin with. So, have you got down to a daily figure cost of what it costs you daily to operate? Um, I do. I mean, I can tell you kind of where we're at now. Um, February and March were the last two months that were compiled, and they were a little higher because you've got all of those initial things, right? Um, in the middle of March, we said, "Oh my gosh, we need a computer." Um, but our actual out-of-pocket spending was about forty-five hundred or so for both months. Now that will get better. Um, because number one, we've acquired that computer um, and those other things. Um, but the other part of that is as the ladies are getting up and on their feet, they can start to contribute to rent, um, which then offsets some of those operational costs. And so we've been pretty successful in getting the donations that we need, but there, you know, there's going to be cash flow issues. It's expensive. And right now you've serviced one person through Mary Kelly. Correct. Correct. I was just, what's your average number in your residence? Um, we have a full capacity of eight. Um, right now at this very moment, I have seven, but I also received the phone call earlier today for number eight. And then I have three currently sitting in jail that are vying for a spot that I don't have. Um, so translation, with the way things look with this other applicant, I'm gonna say we're full, like full capacity tomorrow. Um, and that hasn't been 100% decided because we haven't met to talk about it, but um, I believe we're at full capacity tomorrow. And that really is where we need to start looking at that focus. Obviously, with roughly speaking an eight county service area and eight ladies, we need to increase that number. Um, because obviously the addiction problem isn't just here, in just Lyon County, Coffee County, it's, it's all of them. And so the need's much greater. And so obviously we've got to ramp up our game and increase capacity. What's the interaction in terms of like domestic violence with it? I, that overlaps a lot in terms of some of the ones that I see regularly. And they then can utilize Safe Hope as a place to stay but still need your services. Is that uh, something that's being done? 
Yeah, and I, I'm not familiar with that organization. Um, our numbers are 50% of our ladies have been um, domestic violence victims. Um, and this is a really sad statement. About 30% of them also have traumatic brain injuries from that domestic violence. So it, it's, it is, it's a serious issue. Um, there's a lot of crossover, and particularly when you start to look at domestic violence, not always, but often, there's a crossover in those, in those people. Um, same thing with the mental health and even the, the courts and probation, right? There's a lot of crossover, and you'll see them in, in different places. Um, the one thing that I really want to do is to make sure that we're bringing in, in, in effect all those pieces together. Because it's the housing, and yes, we're making sure that they've got access to all of those existing services, but then it's also that, the prompting piece of, are you tenant therapy? Did you go to work every day last week? Are you working through a budget? Where are you at with your mental health and your medications and all that sort of thing? So hopefully it becomes that wraparound holistic approach, um, utilizing all the pieces that are available already in our communities. So in fact, is administering those funds, how does that, how does that work? You know? Well, the commission would have to decide to do something different. Yeah. Uh, we have very, we, we don't have a, a high amount of special alcohol funds each year. If you wanted to do an allocation for this organization, you could do it from another source also. But it would take some sort of an action to undo what you did to have. Are safe house too? Uh, they have that requested allocations at different times, and we and you have done it at certain times, but it's, it hasn't been every year. It's always been budgeted, though. Mm -hmm. It might be something to look at at the budget time. Uh, I'll let you go ahead. It would be appropriate. Yeah. Okay. I think at this time what we will do is we will take your request under consideration. We'll be moving into our budget season here in the next, but before we know it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, certainly keep you in mind and see what we can do to help. Okay. With your well, blessing, gentlemen, um, and some of the other counties that we've been to, I, I'm going back quarterly just to give everybody an sure. update to keep them up to speed. Yeah, well, that's, that's what I was going to request. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah, yeah that, way, that way there's full disclosure. Everybody knows yes. what we're doing. Yes. Um, also, if any of you are in Emporia, um, you've now got my card. You've got my number. You want to come take a look at what we're doing? Um, up close and personal, more than welcome to come over for a, for a house tour. Okay. Well, one more question. Yes, sir. But, uh, do you have a cost basis per individual, like what it costs? Um, and that's going to fluctuate based Four. upon, yeah, how many spots I've got filled. Just off the top of my head, our, our goal is to collect $100 a week in rent once they're up, once they're running, and that essentially covers operations. Um, our goal, but where we, where we struggled a little bit, is that 70% being unemployed when they come. And it takes them two weeks to get a job, and then a week to get the paycheck. Um, and in the meantime, we've got that lag time. But ideally, that four hundred, that hundred dollars a week in rent, roughly speaking, the goal is to make that offset operational cost, so that we're even Stephen at the end of the month. Hundred dollars per individual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Roughly speaking, in round numbers. So. Yeah. Well, it gives us something to think about when we get to budget. Absolutely, and y'all have my card, so call me if you have any questions, or if you just want to come take a peek. Yes, sir. I'd like to thank you for coming, and uh, continue to move forward. Yeah. All right. Appreciate that. She is amazing. Um, it's fascinating to watch her uh, dream and hope and start to do all the things that, that young ladies do, and fabulous. We're so proud of her. Good. Thank you. Very good. Thank you all. Thank you. Randy, could you check see if Representative Barker's up? Yeah, he's out in the hall. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He's talking to Bruce. Let's get together. Representative Barker. Hey. Finally. The we chairman. appreciate your patience. As you can we're tell. Running to this guy out in the hallway. Oh, and you still made it in. Hey. <laughs> we welcome you. We appreciate you coming in to give us a Yes, good to see you, bud. Uh, I just came down to give you a little bit of an overview of 
what was accomplished in the legislature this year and a few things. Uh, we, uh, we met for 78 days out of our 80. We adjourned uh, and uh, came home we, uh, during the veto session. But now we've got what I've now termed a second veto session scheduled for the 23rd of May. And the reason we're doing that is because this year one of our big projects was, of course, redistricting. We had to address the congressional districts, we had to address the Senate districts, the House district, and the state school board. Uh, of course, the Senate takes care of their own. We just approve whatever they send over to us historically, and they approve whatever we send over to them from the House district. The congressional districts, we uh, I was on the redistricting committee for the congressional districts, and we did about 25 uh, town halls throughout the state. Uh, we did several of them uh, in person, and then some we did remotely, where, certain, where people could go to certain cities, they have a computer set up, uh, and they could ask their questions or give their comments or whatever about the maps. Uh, we did pass the uh, congressional district, uh, and we had to follow federal guidelines on that. You know, one, because of one man vote, one vote, uh, in our Constitution, every district has to have just about the same amount of people, very little tolerance. In fact, the districts that we draw, each district had the exact same number of people in each district. How that works out, I don't know, but that's how it worked out. Uh, we did pass it in the House and passed it in the Senate, sent it to the governor. Uh, a lawsuit's been filed in Wyandotte County uh, there's never, in all of our years of existence in the state, there's not been one of these filed in the state court. They're always filed in federal court. Because if they're federal office holders, they're not state office holders. But they thought, I thought the judge in Wyandotte County would just dismiss it and say, no, they're federal court. He chose not to. Uh, of course, in Wyandotte County, the judges run for election, and he runs as a Democrat. So, uh, not saying that that had any bearing on his decision or not, uh, but he uh, had a full trial for the Attorney General represented the state. Uh, a number of uh, Democrat organizations were, were the plaintiffs in the matter. Uh, I think the trial lasted three or four days, maybe a week, and uh, he found that the map was unconstitutional, which didn't surprise anyone. I think it's constitutional. The only real issue was Wyandotte County and Johnson County, the two most popular counties in the state. Well, a lot of folks showed up and wanted to keep them together. Well, you can't keep them together. They have too many people. So you've got to make a cut somewhere, whether it's in Johnson County or Wyandotte County. Uh, the decision was made that uh, we would cut Wyandotte County. You have to have recognizable lines and we chose I-70 so if you're in, if you're north of I-70 in Wyandotte County you're in one congressional district and if you're south of I-70 you're in another congressional district pretty definable uh, and then of course because of the first district needed the population because all of central and western Kansas we've lost people in the last 10 years so they did have to go into Wyanda, uh, into Douglas County, uh, city of Lawrence, and pick up some of that area to make the population even. Of course, the folks in, in Lawrence didn't like that part of it. So the staff in front of the state Supreme Court, uh, it will not be another trial. We'll have to try it on the record. Uh, they're reviewing the record now. But because they took it up, the filing date uh, for office holders is now uh, the cutoff date was 1 June. They've kicked it down, down to a 10 June now. Hopefully they will render a decision prior to the 23rd of May so that if they find it unconstitutional and a federal lawsuit is not filed, we can go in that day and look at redrawing the map. I'm hopeful that if the Supreme Court finds it unconstitutional, they give us some guidelines or some suggestions because 
they can choose not to. To say it's unconstitutional, send it back to you, then you're kind of in the dark. It's like shooting in the dark. You know, okay, maybe they don't like this part of it, or maybe they don't like this part of it. We just don't know. So I'm hoping they, they send it back with guidance. Uh, if not, we've got, the, you know, we've got another 10 days or so that we can work on that. As far as the, uh, the house districts, uh, there are 125 of them. Of 125, 124 changed. There was only one district and it's in, uh, in Wichita that they didn't have to move any lines. Uh, but every other district, and, uh, you guys have been around like that gray hair like me, you'll remember 10 years ago when the, the districts changed. I, I just remember filing in the, uh, the 68th district had actually campaigned in the 68th district for about 30 days. I went to bed one night in the 68th district and woke up Friday morning and I was in the 70th district. All right. but, but we lost two districts out here in central and western Kansas. We had to collapse those districts and move them to Johnson County because that's where the population had grown. So central and western Kansas has less representative now than it did last year uh, and I hate to look at the, you know, the projections you look at the past projection the last 10 years and look at the future if we don't get population out here we'll lose another two or three districts out here and send them to Johnson County uh, you know one time uh, you know agriculture is still king in Kansas fortunately we have less farmers uh, and less population and kids graduate from college and they don't stay if both my kids graduate from college, they're both in Texas now. Uh, but uh, hopefully we'll get uh, get this all settled. Uh, the Senate district's all changed. Uh, Rick Weldon's district, the representative, has been collapsed. Uh, and to move that Senate district to the eastern part of the state. Uh, so I just would like to get it all over with and, and get going. But a couple of the other things I just want to talk about uh, we did, uh, we took up a number of bills this week, or in this, this session. Uh, one of the ones of interest uh, was one of my bills, is House Concurrent Resolution 5022. That's, uh, and this came on, this is putting the sheriff's position in a constitutional position. When the Constitution was first drawn, the sheriff was in the Constitution. And about 1902, and nobody knows why, it was taken out of the Constitution and made a legislative job or controlled by the legislature. Uh, we, we don't have that problem out here, and only one county in the state does not have a sheriff, and that's Raleigh County. And they opted out back in the 1970s. But the uh, Johnson County commissioners were looking at getting rid of their sheriff and appointing the chief law enforcement officer of the county. The Sheriff's Association, State Sheriff's Association, was concerned about that, that that could be a trend. So the AG, Derek Smith, the Attorney General, brought it to my attention and I introduced a bill, the House Concurrent Resolution. Uh, we passed it out of the House, like 98 to 20. The, he needed the 84 votes. You have to have two thirds on a constitutional position. Went to the Senate, it passed out. So it will be on the ballot in November. So, you know, anytime. I always vote for constitutional amendments because that tells the people get an opportunity to tell me what they want. And, and that's a true democracy, so we're going to put it on the ballot and let the people tell us what they want. Uh, we passed out the budget. We had more money this year than we've ever had because of all the federal money that came into the state for the pandemic. Uh, at the beginning of the session, I had a conversation with the speaker because I chair the Federal State Affairs Committee. And, he gets the chairs around and asks them what they think we need to do this year. Well, I do the same thing that I do at home. I said, that's a piece of debt now. I like to be debt free. So, as you know, Capers was underfunded for years. We had, a, I think it was eight, eight to $10 billion unfunded actuarial. So we ended up putting $1.2 billion into Capers. Uh, when I first went to the legislature in 13, Capers was funded at 56%. We were the third worst in the nation behind California and Illinois. Well, as of putting this money in and everything, what we've done the last few years, 
Capers will be funded at 80%. And most experts will tell you that's like being fully funded. So we went from 56, 57% to 80%. That also, because we put that $1.2 billion in, saves the state about $80 million a year in interest. Now, a couple of years ago, before the pandemic, you know, the governor wanted to re-advertise to get $132 million, which was going to cost us a billion dollars. But it goes over 30 years, and we have to pay an interest rate of 7.75. Fortunately, we didn't let her do that. But then the pandemic came along and she had lost several months. And that's that. But uh, we also paid down some additional debt. Uh, a few years ago, we built the uh, KBI laboratory. We owned about $70 million of that. We paid that off. We don't have that anymore. We had some A and C bonds out there, about $350 million. We paid that off. So I thought it was a good year on paying on debt. We also, we created a couple of years ago the rainy day fund. Didn't put any money in it, but we created it. Well, this year we have an opportunity to put money in it. We initially started out with our first appropriations bill, we put 500 million in it. Because I think it, there's a consensus that we're gonna hit a recession. And revenues, you know, we got this one-time re revenue source from the federal government. We put 500 million in it, and then when we did the Omnis appropriation bill, we had some additional funds. We put 250 more million dollars, so it's a total 750 million dollars in the rainy day fund. Uh, that'll give us a little cushion there in case we do hit uh, a uh, recession. Uh, we also uh, did some stuff on housing, but rural housing put $300 million into it. And what this does, it allows people to get tax credits that have older houses that want to renovate them, or someone comes in and buys an older house and wants to renovate them. We'll be able to get some tax credits for that. We also have a section in there about new housing in, in, in central and western Kansas. We'd like to build some new housing or have people build new housing. So we, we, we did put that money in. Uh, we also, we did have one bill that, 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 on education. We fully funded education pursuant to the Gannon decision. In fact, we put more money in education than the governor asked for. But what I found was interesting, the enrollment in public education in the state of Kansas has went down 15,000 students since the pandemic. Uh, I don't know what you attribute it to. Is it homeschooling or private schooling? Uh, but it did go down 15,000 uh, students. And, and if that trend would continue, how that affects local school districts, you know, it, it, it will affect because we pay based upon the students. Uh, the only thing that I thought we should have done, what we didn't do, and uh, I, I can live with that, we put in $500 million for uh, spatial ed. Uh, we have a statute on the books that says we should fund based special ed by 92 percent. We're not there. Uh, but we did make a larger contribution than the governor wanted, and I, I felt good about that. Uh, we also put some conditions on this. On reading, we created the Every Child Can Read Act, which promotes third grade reading. I was shocked that only 32 percent of the kids in third grade can read at grade level. 32 percent. And so we put we, we adopted a, a policy there and a goal uh, shared between the legislature and the State Board of Education to address alternative educational opportunities in open enrollment. But we wanted to get those kids up to reading level, third grade. The other one that concerned me was seventh grade math. Uh, it was it was in the 30s also. So the Board, of, the Board of Education has got to start developing programs to get kids you know, at the math level of the seventh grade. But math is one of those things, if you get behind, it's hard to catch up. I, I just remember my son, we were doing algebra, he'd taken algebra, and I'd taken algebra in many, many years, and I couldn't help him. My wife was a school teacher, couldn't help him. I hired a tutor. And now he runs a business in, in Texas, very, he owns it. 
and he gets those numbers picked out of his head. And I said, how do you do that, John? I was watching him negotiate a contract. And I said, where did you get that from? He said, Dow, it means something to that. It's money. And I said, okay. Uh, we did, uh, uh, we, we considered a bunch of other ones. We, uh, we had two, and I talked to Tina about this. Uh, we had, this year for some reason, we have an elections committee. And I do chairman of the state, but the speaker called me in with the chairman of the election committee, and he was the new chairman. He said, I want you to start doing election bills this year because the Senate of the state does election bills. Okay, I don't know much about elections. His advice was, well, bone up on them. So I did. And uh, so we did uh, uh, House Bill 2138 and House Bill uh, 2387. And uh, those are, I talked to Tina about this because she was concerned about using this watermark paper. It's gonna be more expensive. Uh, but the Senate was adamant, I was the chairman of the conference committee. And there was a lot of th good things in that bill, uh, the audit and everything, but there was, there, the only bad thing was the, the paper. And I, 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 I agreed that we would do that. Uh, I know it's gonna be more expensive for the county but there's a lot of distrust right now on the election process. And with those watermark, every ballot will be paper. You can check the watermarks up to make sure they're authentic. And I think that that will go a long way in, uh, in helping the public understand that our elections are pure. I will not say that for other states. But I think in Kansas we both do a pretty good job. Does every one of our election machines in Kansas produce a paper ballot? They will. For the coming yes. election? Yes. Everyone will have, you won't have to, you can still do it electronically. Right. But, but, it, but it'll it was, make a copy. That's what I'm talking about. Right. It'll a make a paper, paper trail. It'll be a paper electronic. trail with a watermark on it. Yeah. So that you know, it, we also set up uh, in, uh, 38, uh, we did not have a system like when ballots are moved from the polling places in. Now everyone that touches them will have to sign an affidavit and what we call law enforcement chain of custody. So we know everybody that's touched them all along the line. Uh, but uh, so we, I, I, I did do that one. Uh, and the Secretary of State is also going to have to do an audit. And then the post audit, which I, I'm on ordered an audit of the 2020 elections. A full audit, takes seven months, four auditors, but they will, they will be able to go through all everything and see what, where our weaknesses are, if we have weaknesses. Uh, and then, uh, so much, uh, uh, we, oh, they, uh, we had a bill, uh, the governor vetoed us, House Bill 2448, what we put in the bill is requiring all able-bodied adults without dependents to complete an employment training program in order to receive, receive food assistance. I just always bothered me that the guy sitting on the couch, his mother's couch, not working, getting food stamps. So uh, if, if they're not working 30 hours a week, then they have to enter into and take a training program to improve themselves, or they don't get it. Uh, the governor vetoed it, we overrode her veto, and, and it, it will be law. Uh, food, food sales tax. Uh, we came up with a plan, and in fact, it's very similar to the plan we passed in 2019. And had the governor not vetoed that, we would have no sales tax today on this. We passed it, the governor vetoed it, we could not get the votes to override the veto. But what it does, it drops it next year two cents, and then it drops it another, and then the third year it goes away. And we've done it, and she decided in 19, we wouldn't have any tax on food, uh, food sales now. But we thought it would be better to take a step down approach because nobody could predict the future. And if we go into a really harsh recession, uh, you know, our consensus revenues are going to go down quite a bit. Uh, you know, I, I stopped yesterday to get gas to drive down here. I just happened to pull into Casey's in Abilene. My banker was there. And I hit him, I said, well, I'm sorry, I said, you can afford this gas. And he said, well, I, 
I'm just scouting about, John. I may put a loan officer down here so he can write loans for people to get gas. Said, okay, that could happen. Well, with that, I just want to give you a brief overview. We will be back on the 23rd. Uh, all the other thing is because of a federal mandate, we had to we put ten million dollars into uh, expanding emergency mental health services for uh, suicide, and that was a good deal. The problem that I didn't like about it initially, and we had it last year, is they were going to put a tax on every cell phone in the state of Kansas, and you know, we've got twelve-year-olds out there with cell phones, uh, and they were putting fifty cents a month, and it was going to bring in more money than it would cost for the program, but they wanted that continuing stream of money. So I, I fought it off last year. And this year they came back and said, okay. I said, we have, a, we have a process. It's called appropriations and tax. Go to the tax committee if you want to put the tax on. If you want to go to appropriations, you get your money from them. But don't come to Health and Human Services and ask us to put a tax on cell phones. It's just not going to happen. And uh, so this year they did make smart choices. They went to appropriations and got $10 million. If they had put a tax on every cell phone at 50 cents, they'd have brought in $85 million. So we, we just funded them with $10 million, which is what presently we're working on about $3 million. But it, it is going to expand. And they'll, you'll be able to, you know, like 911, you'll be able to pick up and do 988 on a suicide or a mental health crisis. Uh, with that, if you have any questions, I'd be glad to kind of take the questions. Yeah, Randy. Uh, you were talking about capers. Wasn't it KDOT that they put took money out of and give it to KDOT for our roads? And that's why it short trains the KDOT our capers. No, what happened in capers was in 19, and I was, I was on the capers committee to read, I know the history. Uh, in 1992, 93, uh, not beating up on Democrats, but they took over, they were the majority in the House. They passed the 85 points, which before Capers was designed to retire at 62 and 65 with Social Security. Brad, you know this. <laughs> uh, that's how it was designed. And it's a fixed benefit, which they never anticipated a cost of living allowance or anything else. It was just gonna be a fixed benefit that you know the day you start your job that this formula is going to work for you. It's 1.75. By the number of years of your base salary. Uh, so when they changed it to 85 points, suddenly you've got somebody that started working for the state at 23 or 22, a teacher, 22. They're suddenly, they're 57, 56. They have their 85 points. So they can draw their capers. So that, and, and in seven and a half years, you get everything out of capers that you put in it plus seven, uh, what, eight percent because at that time it was eight percent. So in seven and a half years, everything you put in it plus eight percent interest, you have taken out. So suddenly you're 62, and the uh, capers people tell me that teachers live longer than anybody else. I didn't know that. Uh, but that's what causes the unfunded act. Well, you put everything in it, plus your 8% interest, you're 62 or 63 years old, and you cause the unfunded act to work. If you live to be 81, you still get the same amount until 81. But, but that's what caused, it was a big change when they went from 62 to 65 and said 85 points. So a lot of people retire earlier than the 62 or 65. Especially in the teaching. Yeah, especially in the teaching. Uh, and until we changed the law about five, six years ago, you could retire from one district and then go work for another district and build a second retirement. I knew a, a, a superintendent of schools that had three districts to pay him retirement. Uh, so, but we did stop that. The other thing we're doing is hiring our, some of our retirees back and we're having to pay more. You have to pay more capers. Yeah, that's hard to understand. Uh, I, I, a lot of it has to do with I know a little about that. Uh, it's it's a uh, cost benefit. I think someone brought up earlier uh, is the reason they came up with that formula, Capers did, and said this is what we need to to allow them to do that. Okay. Hey, well, we, we really appreciate you taking the time. Thanks, Ian, and Jeff, and Davis.
I can't believe 30 minutes flew by that quick. But, uh, I can't even. A lot of information to cover. Uh, well, if you ever have any questions, uh, there, there's a lot of the, Oh, I was going to tell you one other thing. Uh, I made my wife happy this year. My wife's a former school teacher. And the big thing, she was a home ec school teacher before they had fires. And she always complained about she had to go out and buy supplies because she would go to her administrator and ask for additional funds for whatever materials she needed. And they'd always say, we never have any money. We don't have money. We don't have money. So she would actually go out. And I know art teachers do that. They go out and buy supplies for students. But if they do that now, they get to take a $250 tax deduction. So I told my wife that she was very happy. She said, it's about time. <laughs> hey, John, just, just a little bit capers. One quick question. Is the, do you guys legislatively have any veto power over the Board of Trustees? We do not. Uh, because they're trying to cut the, the, the expected rate of return down yeah. from 775 to lower takes your billion dollars and guts it to some extent. It, it does. Uh, but, you know, the other argument on the other side is a lot of other states have, a, yeah, have less of an assumed rate. You know, when I first went to the legislature, you know, we, we assumed 8%. And we made it every year. We mm -hmm. uh, made that 8% or more. Yeah. Uh, so I don't understand why they want to cut it down. I don't either, because now it's 775, if I remember correctly, and they've been exceeding that for the last seven years. Yeah, and prior to that, it was 8% forever. Yeah. So, just anyway, yeah, I'm Thank sorry. You. Took more time than yeah. I, we appreciate. Okay. The information. Bryce, we have some video. Tina has the two that I gave you plus the one she had. I only have two here, so. The two, the papers oh, that I gave you. Oh, you opened it already. Yeah, well, they were sending an email, so. Oh, okay, right. sorry. I was like, I want to <laughs> we, we appreciate the patience of, of the, the men that came to, to witness the opening, and we appreciate your company's participation. Um, did you both sign, did you both print your names? Uh, if you could do that, that'd be great. If you just pass that around. And so you should have a total of four there. There's four? Yeah, I, I guess Bryce's is in just two together in there's, that paper clip. Yeah, there's two. Yeah, there's two. Yeah, there's two. Yeah, there's two. This is this is for Indigo. Yes. Uh, we corrected the agenda after it initially went out. So. Pearson Construction, and this is for the Indigo project, $2,606,230. Next one is Koss Construction. Koss Construction, $3,997,000. Two hundred and forty three. Three million nine hundred ninety seven thousand two hundred and forty three. That was cost. Cost. Cornell. 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 Sorry. Cornell. Construction. Two million two hundred ninety six thousand. Seven hundred sixteen dollars and seven cents. And that's APAC. Yep. And the last bid is APAC 
$3,392,998.42. The last one was APAC, $3,392,998.42. Let me start over. <laughs> three million, there's too many digits. Three million three hundred ninety-two thousand nine hundred eighty-nine dollars forty-two cents. Nine eighty-nine. Yes. That's the first time. I was a nine eight nine nine eight. Okay. Nine eight nine forty-two cents. Oh, I'll look at all that. Okay. Yes. Because we're not gonna. We weren't. I want to make sure it goes through everything and then we'll prove it. Okay. okay. And then that's, that's what we need to review and make sure all right, all documentation, yep. linear footage is matched right, up. Right, right. But again, appreciate the companies that participated in bidding. We know it's a it's an incredibly volatile climate, <laughs> so it makes your job interesting. Oh yeah, challenging. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, I will I will say in order to uh, alleviate some of that variability. I did add by addendum um, the um, basically the fuel price index as well as the asphalt price index. So therefore, it establishes a time, a price as of now. So if the price oil goes up, um, so we can reimburse that if it goes down. We get the credit for that as well. So Kate has been doing that for about a year now. So anyway, I'll so I'll check those out. That was in the bitch facts to where they know yes. That. Yeah. Price oil based on what price? Um, five, no, they ten. have. Well, they have a K dot has an index that they send out every month, and then that's where everything is established by that. <coughs> so all these guys are going. That that's yep. the number that they're. Yep. Yep. Even if it's higher today. Yeah. That's the number yes. they have to go off. Yep. Yeah, they're all familiar with it. So. Okay. Just making sure. Somebody bid for three months. Ago. Yes. Well, the prices were. Yeah. Well, that's what they did. Yeah. 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 So, okay. okay. And then you have several other items, right? If you want to, whatever you want to do, if you want to go on administrative business, I'm here all afternoon. Uh, so. could, could we do that maybe at 3 or 3.30? You tell me when. Uh, okay. Get rid of the crowd. Yeah, we want to get the 2.30 one taken care of. Uh, about 3 o'clock. Sounds good to me. Okay. Appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. I'll give you a chance to look over those numbers some more. And I'll probably just stay in here. A lot of stuff to go through the checks. Okay. All right. Uh, you just asked what the generator Oh, okay. Uh, we're ready for our 2.30 agenda, by, agenda item. There's the Doyle CUPS. No, no, no. We're, we're, we're going to skip it. That. We're going to skip and move to the 230. We're all here for administrative business anyway. We're all here for the commission. We can do all that. Sorry. Sure for your name on this. I'll go out there and save some more room. On here. <laughs> okay. Excuse me. Excuse me. Make more room for you. Is there anybody online? And yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. I hope so. The last one I got by my nose.
No, it ain't either, but you know. <laughs> yeah. There's some chairs right in front of you. Two or one of you people go out here. <laughs> yeah. It's like church. So, More chairs in here. Y'all got everybody shut down. We don't even want to come in here. <laughs> Here, I guess. There's plenty of chairs right here. Yeah, but it's up front. Then. I was going to let some of the ladies make sure. There's, there, there, there's more be, chairs behind the doors as people come in. There are more chairs behind the door that we can set up. There's no chairs here. Yeah, I know. there's a camera right behind you and that's what will be posted on TV so if you decide that you're going to stand there we'll just have the back of you. I didn't know if those were chairs. No, they're for, for you. Public. Well, well nobody would be able to see it if you're standing there though. We get a good shot of the back yeah. of the head. Yeah. <laughs> we can comment on how stylish your hair do. Oh my god. Yeah, there we all do. We're all comedians here. <laughs> Center. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just want to make sure you, there was a camera behind <laughs> Did you want to sit in here, man? There are more chairs right behind the door there if anybody needs one. We got one more person coming, but it'll be a little late. So we're ready to start? Yep, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> For the record, my name is Tom Bratton. <laughs> I 
appear before the commission today in opposition the continuation of the wind farm project known as Doyle 1, 2, or 37. Nobody knows. <clears throat> this project started back with me back in 2010. When Rex Savage of Windborne Energy came to my home <clears throat> proposing a, a lease for a wind farm project he was promoting. I, like others, were told it was going to happen anyway, as all my neighbors had already signed lease agreements with his company. After, taking, after talking to other neighbors, I found that they too were told the same story, making them feel that others had already signed up the project was going to go was going ahead whether they agreed or not. This representation was not accurate or truthful and led to <coughs> misrepresentation of misrepresentation of the truth of the of reality. Many of these folks would have not signed if they had known the truth. It does. <laughs> Take a breath and relax, Tom. <laughs> By 2015, Sunwind Energy Group, LLLP, contracted to purchase and operate the project from Windborne Energy. <clears throat> the Marion County Commissioners did not vet Sunwind Energy Group, LLLP, which was reported to have built several wind energy and solar energy farms across North America. Upon investigation, it was found that they had never built or managed even a sig single wind generation regenerator or solar panel, let alone all over North America. The principal of Sunwind Energy Group, LLLP, one Joseph H. Kraft, was later connected to a $1.8 billion, that is B, with a B and a billion, Sorry, I was spitting on you. Uh, dollars, because I don't know. Dollars uh, Ponzi scheme known as Telex Free. Sunwind Energy Group LLLP received a $2 million loan to subsidize a Doyle North project. Take a break, Tom, and relax. Joseph H. Kraft sold this scheme to Marion County commissioners using money from stolen Ponzi scheme. Right, take a take a breath and relax. Comes now, Expedition Win, having bought and paid the county zoning department for a full staff report, which included avian studies, working with the uh, Camps Department of Wildlife, Parks, and Tourism, and gerrymandering our our protest petition. Take a breath, relax. Seventy-two plaintiffs filed a lawsuit to try to stop the corruption that end up with Susan Mayo and myself. Take a breath and relax. On April 1st, 2020, I received a demand letter to cease and desist the lawsuit the very day that the Doyle Project Cups of Condition Use Permits expired. Take a breath and relax. I was later sued for $35 million. Take a break and relax. Marion County Planning and Zoning is currently in litigation for improper notice over the expired conditional use permits. Take a break and relax. Greed, lies, corruption, Ponzi scheme money, deception, and a complete disregard for the Flint Hills ecosystem are the foundation of this project. Take a break and relax. Look each in, look each Look each commissioner in the eye and stay. Do the right thing and stop this project now. It will only get worse the longer you put it off. Take a break, relax, smile, and say thank you for your time. See, it didn't take long, did it? <laughs> okay, here I am. Get the hell out of here. Thank you. 
Speech. <laughs> the re- no. rebuttal. Got the rebuttal. You can watch it on YouTube there after a while. See out of the other door. I said I couldn't see. <laughs> and you can't hear. <laughs> no, I can't. I was just, yeah. No, no. I get it. Yeah. Get Explains it. so much. Yes. <laughs> yes. supposed to be here at three, that'll last till five, so right I'll come back at five. Nice to see you, Brad. <laughs> be good if I could do that just to make you come out. Hey, time's irrelevant for me. Now, for the commissioners, on the other hand, they may have something else in mind. But... So, while we're waiting, yes. <laughs> is that okay? Administrative, yes. Well, um, <coughs> on the table there, I have given <coughs> you a couple of um, security proposal RFPs. These, um, they've been kind of in the process of being drafted over the last couple of years. So, sorry. If you could make sure and look them over, and I would like you to approve them next week to next be able week. to send up okay. to be sent out. Very good for me. Yes. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Susan. Good morning. Or afternoon. <laughs> oh, your day is going well. Yeah. yeah. It's been one of those days. What's day before tax day? Yeah, so. A little, little bit of mail. A little bit busy. Taxes? Are those due? <laughs> well. Okay. So I sent to you all kind of a, a synopsis of what the tax sale that our homes where people are, are living. And then there may be people living in the other properties but not the, the taxpayer. The taxpayer isn't living in that property. Because some of these are rentals, I know, that other people are living in. So the home thing may be, not be 100%, but somebody may be living there and we just don't know. And I believe I have a copy of that in your mail folder. If you haven't looked at it previously. It is. I gave it to you, Tina. I didn't yeah. give it to her until Saturday, so I apologize. I never got down here. Oh, yeah. You got it? It's not. It's not there. That was the last one. Yeah. I figured everybody saw it. Yeah, that's what's coming right there. Oh, oh is there only one? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 Ye
sorry. Oh, he used to ask me a question. And... Okay, so um, of those, how do I count these? That's going to be one prepared. I apologize. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So sixteen of those I know are where the taxpayer is. Where I should say, I don't know if they're living there for sure, but that's their address. Their address, if everything's mailed, matches the address that's in the tax sale. The other information is whether they've been in escrow before. And um, I think you wanted to know how many people had been in escrow previously. And some of these escrows are a little misleading because some of these people made one or two payments and then quit, and then made one or two payments and then quit. So, you know, if you want specifically the amounts, you know, or the, the, the timing, I'll be happy to share that with you. But there really aren't that many um, that were in escrow previously. And let's see. And then, you know, there's, there's a couple from 2012 that were in escrow. And they've been in escrow off and on for years paying what they pay. So I know when I was here last Friday, we kind of talked about um, since the, the understanding, whether there's anything that was verbally said from our office, I don't know, but the understanding seems to be people thought if they were paying escrow, they were safe from the tax bill. I never have told anybody that in the 11 years I've been there. I always tell them this is not a free pass out of being published in the paper or the tax sale. Right. But there's this impression that if they paid something each month, <coughs> that they would be, be safe. And um, and quite honestly, the you know, I've only heard, um, I've heard from a lot of people who are making arrangements to pay, and some of them asked if they could pay. I had one person coming in um, May 30th, and I, I told them I would, I would accept it May 30th. But most people understand they need to be paid by tomorrow, the 17 in Boulder. There's only been two two property owners that have contacted me you know, with, with concerns about how they're going to get caught up. And they were asking if there's a way that they could be given another year to pay to get caught up. And the way I feel about it is that that's fine, but they need to have be caught up with 18 as well. Because I'm telling people when they pay 17 in Boulder, that you have to pay, have 18 paid before we go through this tax sale thing again next year if you want to be an escrow. So, because some people have paid 17 and older and they're back in escrow now, mm -hmm. but the only way they can, this escrow thing will work for them is if they follow through and pay before the next tax sale. Otherwise, you can be right back. There it is. <laughs> Can't blame Brad. He's in the room. <laughs> so, that's my story. <laughs> any, any other follow-up questions from the commissioners that had those earlier questions? Uh, someone's got several places. <coughs> and I know if it's the, well, I see a name on there, it's one of them. Hilton's not done nothing with any of them except for maybe one. Uh, I don't know how how any it you get with Susan. What have they been told? I've got like one or two phone calls, and they assume once they're in escrow, that was the question, like you alluded to earlier, that they were then safe. And I that's the impression that they have given me. That's what they have told me sure. that they were under the impression. But I don't. Uh, you know, the escrow. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know exactly where that came from. Yeah, I don't either. To be honest, yeah. because that is not how it. You know, obviously, that is not how that works. Mm -hmm. And we always tell people, even when they're in escrow, that if they don't pay their current taxes by that certain date, well, then they're going to be in the paper regardless. Yeah. And it's just a, a tool, not a. So not a lot of these people haven't been in the paper. Oh, they, yeah, they've probably been in for the current tax year. We don't publish the past tax years unless they hit the tax sale, and then, then they're published. Oh, okay. Yeah, they only publish that one time for the current tax. 
Oh, okay. But it's unpaid. And then they're not published again until they get the tax in. So you could pay this year and you wouldn't get the paper for Correct. the last two years. Okay. Yeah. I think you're a perfect from day one. Do you know? I don't know the name of what the property is listed at the OC mark or Peabody. I mean, yes. I've, I've had so many. That's the one I marked. People question that. Yeah, this, that's the one on the second page. It's a $56,000 one. Is that the one? Yes. And I put gas station by it. Okay. And it's unpaid from 2010, and that's the reason. And in the past, we've not picked that up on the tax side right. just because of potential liability. There, yeah, and that's, <laughs> that is, yeah, I mean, it's out there. And I, I don't know if there's, what kind of liability is it? I mean, if if it's if it's sold at tax auction. Some, well, it depends on the, to whom it is sold or if it actually sells, what we do with it in that circumstance. There's liability that runs with that. Unfortunately, because someone's going to carry it, you can attempt. I've uh, been through that before, where it has sold to a, an owner, and they've attempted to go back to the to the prior owner when it was still operational, and when they can hopefully earmark or establish when the potential contamination existed, when things were installed, when it was last used. But it's a, it's a gigantic mess. Now the state has gone in there and cleaned it up, and so it's currently in the process. I mean, whoever, you could sell it and then whoever buys it would just, they, they have to leave that monitoring equipment in place. Yeah, especially so there would well. have to be stipulations mm -hmm. dated at the sale, I believe, about that. And the state will, I think, I don't know if you've experienced that before, Tina, but they will come in and say if there's any element of that in terms of cost that they wish to be added to in some fashion. I mean, I've seen that happen on several. So okay. we'd have to work our way through all of that. Well, is it not best in our, to try something or just set? Well, yeah, I think at some point, as long as this has gone on, it mean, probably is. We're 12 years down the road now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not going to change unless somebody steps in. Well, and the cleanup was done under that orphan program mm -hmm. through the state, so I don't know that. So the tanks are Would you? Would you first, if he was to do that, would you have Brad or, or somebody address a letter to that company? And I would think it would be your tax sale attorney that probably would yep. be involved in determining what to do with that property, whether or not to include it, and what steps would need to be taken. Yeah. What do you think? I think so. And if they don't, I mean, I'll be happy to help. I'm not looking to slough that off, but that's normally what I would expect to occur. And for this, whoever the cleanup crew is, to give us a yeah. letter of, I mean, find out exactly yeah. whether they're going to come back from bills or just walk so we can move forward. And the announcement about the ongoing monitoring is something that's essential because those wells will sit there for many years. Yeah. And yes. there's a, you know, an annual, if not semi-annual check. They run that through a lab and there is a cost assessment to that. And there would only be certain, um, certain uses of that property that right. would be um, deemed appropriate. Very good. Other questions? I had one other question sure. regarding this, um, you know, hindsight, they say about hindsight. <laughs> you know, one thing in the letter, the initial letter that was sent, there really wasn't a, a due date for um, the 17 and older taxes. I just told them to contact me, you know, and, and see what could work out. And the people who've contacted me, of course, know what the due date is, but the ones who haven't made contact with me don't know that. Is that anything that we need to be concerned about or I mean I really don't know if I should need if I need another follow-up letter before the tax attorney sends something yeah or? and we want to check with the tax attorney as well to be sure okay. that that's sound advice but I think yes there should be some type of a deadline date yes on that. okay because it wasn't yeah and that was a concern okay all right because we have had a few people pay so there's not as many as we have okay I will talk to her and, and do what she says. Very good. Anything else? So, um, are they, are the tax people on board with us to, I mean, we're all talking the same talk now. The tax attorney will, I think, follow your policy recommendations direction. Are you talking about, who are you talking about? Well, <laughs> the, I'm saying, the if we want to get after 17, I hope this company right. knows that, and I mean, I think it, I think it does, but. 
we want them to be working towards that, plus you to be working towards that. Mm -hmm. And so, whatever. I don't know. I guess I just just ask the question that we're all on the same page. Okay. Okay, so at this point, there's no action regarding this, at least not at this moment. Okay, because I'll, I'll get a phone call this afternoon. So. Good. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Susan. Was you okay. expecting us to act on something? Well, the, <laughs> I guess, I meant, maybe I'm misunderstanding. Do we, I mean, are we going to allow anybody to, to begin an extension for 16 and 17, or? I don't, I'm not going to do anything go case by case with or? that direction. Okay. I think you set the deadline and go That's with it. it. See, what, see what happens. Okay. Well, More about putting past year's taxes in the paper to be overdue instead of this, this year's taxes. Embarrass people into paying. Well, that's, that's what happens anyway. Well, it's just the current year taxes that are unpaid. Current. You know, there's a church on there that owes for five to six years. And the church members seen that. They said, we step up and pay it, the whole thing. Well, it hits every year because they, they don't. But it's only $1,000. There's $10,000 or something. Yeah, but there's probably some statutes to those type of publications. You can't we step can't, past them. We can't embarrass, can't embarrass people. There is a statute that governs when it's to be published. I don't think that there's anything that would prohibit you from publishing more information than right. it's asking for, but the cost is prohibitive. Yes. It's ridiculously expensive to do that. Yes. Okay. Well, do, if, do, you, do we need a motion to go to, or, or have we already done that to make a motion to go up to the 16 or 17 to not to allow anything? That's what we already I mean, you've already offered a tax sale. Okay. I think what Susan is asking for is there are certain um, instances where the, the taxpayer is living in the home, they want to pay, but they're not able to, and whether or not the commission would allow them to enter an agreement with the treasurer to, if they can have the 16 and 17 taxes paid within a, a year's period of time, if that is something that the commission would be open to in those instances um, where the taxpayer that's their actual home and if they can develop a plan to where they can have at least those two years paid within a certain period of time whether the commission would approve that or not is that what you're kind of after yes that's okay. what I've been asked to ask you we don't want to kick them on the, out on the street so that's what she needs an answer about yes or no whether you're willing to do that and if not then she'll let them know, and if so, then she'll move in that direction. And also, if you're going to do that, is it going to be every one that requests, or as you were alluded to earlier, are you going to go case by case? And if you are, we are going to establish something in writing, and I know that's difficult because it's an incredible problem. Yes, we don't. Right. It needs to just be a baseline, and, right. and that's yeah. that's it. Sorry. Yeah. If the yeah. person's living in there, in the it's, it's a tough situation. I mean, if, it, if it was only two years taxes, it would be maybe a little different from my point of view. We're, we're okay. going back. That's fine. So, I just want to make sure I understand. So, so we're all united on that? And it is, it is an asset. It isn't like you can't go to the bank and get, get that. I mean, it's a bit. Some people can't. The, the collateral is the house. Personally, that taxes. It's not in good shape either. Well, okay. some of those, some of those right. maybe, okay. some of those think we're asking questions. Some of those maybe I won't. Yes, not. I understand. Seriously, thank you. 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 Sure. I mean, you had 15 minutes. I mean, yeah, ten, five years ago, ten years ago. And I you think know, a few more items. Yes. 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 The secondary market was not active and very good. So I'll let you drive from where you want to start. All right. I never paid escrow. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's Have a, a, okay, just a second. Wait till I get the rest of the commission ready. Uh, 
We're talking about this group. Go on. Okay, are you ready to get your attention back? I have a utility permit uh, request for Congress Telephone for signature. Commission census to approve. Yeah, authorize the chairman to sign. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second by Commissioner Brecker. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carried. Usually I have to go over the motion. I didn't think so. <laughs> okay. Motion was made. I went out for bids for a utility bucket for our Volvo loader that I talked about a couple months ago. Got two responses. Uh, one of them was from Van Keppel for a three and a half yard bucket for $7,750. And I got another bid from Murphy Tractor for a 3.5 utility bucket for 11,200. <laughs> so I'd like to permission to purchase the one for 7750 from Van Keppel. They actually have it in stock in Garden City. I was quite shocked at that as well. So utility bucket is straight bucket or is that four and one? No, we, we already have two four and ones as well. Yeah. <laughs> and this would be a larger bucket, uh, more beneficial to what we use them for. So do we have a loader? What's that? Questions? That's all the payloader. That's on our Volvo yeah. loader. Is there a motion to approve the uh, bucket bid from Van Campbell at seventy seven fifty? Motion by Commissioner Dawkins, second. Commissioner, Commissioner Crowfoot, discussion. Is that in your 22 budget? Yes. Equipment budget. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carried. Hmm. Well, I don't know what it did with it. I actually went out um, trying to find a vibratory plate compactor like we would use for patching. Stuff like that, I had a printout of it, and I don't know what happened to it, but um, I found one. Uh, the one that would do our job was about $1,400, $1,500 from Northern Tool. The over $1,000, so I still have to have a, like one of those where you put patching material out and you run back with that instead of using the truck or whatever else, you get better compaction. For spot that. patch? Yes. Yeah. Is that for a machine, or is that for just hand? Machine? Well, it's a vibratory machine that you push. Oh. So they like, also use them like when they're paving up next to a, a right. ridge rail. Just yeah. plate compactor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Like a sand factor. Yeah. Yeah. And the one I was looking for will actually it says it'll compact 22 inches deep. I'd really like to see that, but I thought it was reasonable for the for the price. So about 1500 14, 1500 I don't remember exactly what it was, but I have to have commission approval. So will they use it? Well, they're going to. That's okay. <laughs> we don't that's, have to, yes. And that's up yep. to you. Yep. I understand. Understand. I understand. I think so. that's it's a very work tool. If yeah. It's, if it's now, I've, I've seen a lot of people that go out and do that. They actually build a little um, carrying device on the back of the truck. You just run it up on there, and then it's there, and you go to the next one. And so, um, granted, if you had to run it from place to place, it'd be something. But I think it'd be beneficial. Is there a motion to approve? So Motion by Commissioner Becker to approve, approve the plate packer. plate compactor for approximately not to exceed not to exceed uh, I think 15. it was I say fifteen hundred. We won't pay any tax on it. If it's more than that, I can get back with okay. it. But like I said, I have a printout. I don't know what so that do we, exceed. Would we expect to see that out with the patch mail? Yes. Okay, motion by Commissioner Becker is your second. Second, Commissioner Golfing discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carried by vote. Okay. Uh, update on Purple Wave. Everything has been paid in full except for our 2013 Volvo motor grader. Um, they were supposed to have it paid for within two days. I followed up with them. Uh, evidently, the, the original purchaser now has backed out or whatever else. They'd given the second bidder until tomorrow at noon um, to come up with payment. So. Uh, that's the original bidder was bidding on both. Well, I don't know either that or he was speculating that he could turn it once he got it and he found out that he couldn't do that. I don't know. Um, but we, like I said, that everything else has been paid in full. The Purple Wave, that money should be coming this week, barring whatever they have uh, with us. So just FYI. So 
Um, can I about? Oh, oh, yes. Okay. Uh, did you follow up with the city of Marion about that other unit and uh, let them know that? Okay. I had talked to them and they were trying to figure out how they were going to pay for it okay. in their budget wise and things like that. I just want to make sure someone notified yep. them. So you did. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, he's, uh, I talked to Tim and he said him and um, Roger. No, um, the, 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 the clerk. Oh, the team. Tiffany. Tiffany. Yes, Tiffany. Uh, that they were talking about it. So. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, alrighty. Uh, the indigo bins. Just right off that, I thought those bins were exceptionally good. So, I'll check it over and make sure we have everything right. While, while you're talking about indigo, uh, Bryce and I have discussion, and I, I think deal if we're looking for a 10 year payout on this or whatever, nine year or whatever we did, uh, I'd like to look at the last five or six miles, whichever. I looked at it this weekend, drove it with a tear up. So, ask the commission whether they'd like to add that at some point here to this next. When we got a, can that be an addendum to this bit? Um, no. Well, okay. it the addendum is too late now, it would be a change order. Because we've 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 uh, right. uh, let it. Um, if we do want to do something, I would rather do it that way, even though it may cost money, because then you have one person that's responsible for it. If we let another contract to do like full depth reclamation, yeah. whatever else, be two separate contracts. Even right with this company. Yes. This company that is Conway Hill is the one that I saw a little bit. Yes. They're a good company. Yeah. Uh, the jobs that they do, they do a lot of them. Yeah. Again, if it's something you want me to check into, I can I can get back uh, with them, assuming that everything works out with their little bid. Now, the the question is, do you, if you want to do base work, do you want to do full depth reclamation? Do you want to do it for the whole project? Do you want to do it for? I mean, honestly, I look at it this way: if you're looking to full depth reclamation, it's really more beneficial to do the whole job. Simply because if you do half of it and you don't do the other half, now you've got a different life cycle for the two projects. And if you're going to do base work on the south end, you wouldn't have to go with a three inch overlay, you could drop it down to a two inch overlay all the way through there. But if you're re scoping the whole project, wouldn't it make more question. sense to actually do another bid? If you're doing them, changing the scope that much Just legally, over. wouldn't yeah. it be At this more point, appropriate? I mean, that'd be my concern. Because if we re scope the, you know, the part that's already been let, with that change, that's one still wouldn't necessarily be a right. concern to me if you were just that. But then if you're adding a percentage increase in terms of the overall scope with this additional piece on the end, you probably want to rebid it. I, I can do whatever you want. I just you know the more we push it off, the later in the year. Yeah. Now assuming we had four, I was very shocked to have four bidders that said they could still do it yet, yet this year because I had one immediately said we can't even touch it this year. So, but I'm saying if if you guys want to do that, again I don't have a problem. But we just just to to reinforce the plan the current plan in place is the county is going to go out and spot repair right. base repair base repair yep. yes dig up back everywhere there's patches well i mean there's mm -hmm. there's those and we've got places that need work that aren't patched as well so but again if you if, to getting rid of that subjectivity that we're going to work here 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 you know that may or may not cover it but if you you know objectively speaking we go through and do the whole job the very first words out of this guy's mouth this morning was make sure your project covers your pay, your sure. work covers your Well, and, and again, it comes down to the fact is there's not a person around professionally or whatever else that says I can guarantee 10 years out of that, right. out of that road because <laughs> you have absolutely no idea what happens after today. Right. I mean, the traffic may increase, whatever may happen. The weather. Yeah, I mean, just so. Yeah. But anyway, so I'll, again, I'll do what you want to. Okay. Go ahead, Bryce. I just wanted to inject it while we was talking about it. Well, I, that's on my agenda as, as okay. well. So, okay. but obviously, if you want to, if you want to go back and do a full depth reclamation uh, to do that, then we won't even. I mean, we have the right to refuse all these bids, and it'll be next year. Poss I don't know, and, and that will be up to the bidder to determine. You know, when they can get the full depth reclamation done um, and get the overlay. It all depends on when they can. Typically, the, the full depth recommendation people can work with the primes um, because it comes down to when the prime can overlay it because you don't want to let this thing sit any longer than you have to. The reason why I'm talking about this is because there's two different definitions of patchwork. There's there's some our county way does does things. There's a different way another county does things. Some of them comes out and cuts a blacktop patch in 
on these spots and lays three to four inches. Harvey County does that. And, and then they overlay over that patch, but they're, they're preparing themselves for the next, for the overlay. Our county has never done that. We had a machine at one time and we did it and we had problems and we sold the machine and it, it, we blacktop lay down machine to fix the patches and stuff, but we couldn't get things accomplished with the leadership we had at that time. So there's just different ways. To, when you say patchwork or face patch, there's different, different expectations and different counties have different expectations. And so, and that's why I asked them. My understanding is it's dig it out, pack it back in. Well, and like I said, if you're, if you're if you're asking because I can go out there and I can do all the patch we want, and all it takes is one patch that breaks back afterwards. Sure. We didn't patch that; they're probably right. and that's yeah. wasted all over it. You know, right? right. I, I, yeah. yeah. So, so there's just there's quite a bit of thoughts here. I mean, I just I want everybody to take that in consideration. Is it serving? Our largest community, and it's not serving me, it's serving the people along that road, and the largest community in our county. So, that's, historically, it's that last five miles that's been the issue, though. Yeah, that, that's why I say I, that. And when you say don't do it, though, that's why I was, and that's fine. I, I don't yeah. mind that. See what you're saying. There's two different bases there that would later on may cause something. Well, I guarantee they will. Yeah. I mean, if you if you redo the base, you're going to be in the 15 year range. If you don't redo the base, you're going to be probably in the eight to 10 year. But again, I don't know. Right. I mean, you know. Well, I, I don't know. Yeah. You know, that's the whole thing. So. Well, thank you, Bryce. Thank you, Commission. I just think we if we need to think about, it, we need to get it done. Whether I, I want to give you more time to think, but. Bryce has got a lot on his plate here. Well, I just, we just don't want to get in the sixth or seventh year of that going for three or four more years and have a mess. I'd, I'd say the decision needs to be made now. You gotta move forward, you gotta change it. If you it, change it. The only thing that I could offer in that is I could get hold of <coughs> at, at least the the uh, two contractors that do this that are in state, at least there are I think there was what two others that did that they were from out of state to do the full depth recommendation and check on their schedule. If they can do it yet this year, then there's that's something to look at. But if they're going to say no, we, there's no way we can touch it, then this company don't do it. They don't. They don't believe so. I don't. I don't. So I, I, I can check with them. I wasn't aware. I don't think they bid on the, the first time. Oh, so. okay. And full depth reclamation runs how much per mile? Well, I I don't know. I mean, we no. we yeah. we planned on 125 to 150 thousand dollars for Nighthawk, but that was last year. Um, right. Prior to oil going up. Um, you know, so I, I and, and fuel costs have gone up too because it does take a lot of fuel. Five miles, at least seven hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. Probably. Oh yeah. What oh, you're yeah. saying? Well, I, I mean, I could, I could probably fairly say one hundred fifty thousand a mile. Okay. Um, miles. So if you take that times eleven, you're not miles. One point. Oh, 11, you know, eleven. Yes, eleven miles. Okay. I, it's a gamble, folks. Whatever. If we do it, I do another one point seven million dollars. Yeah. But. You put that against the life cycle costs, um, money-wise, and again, that that's where the the question comes in: is what what's going to happen down the road? Yeah, it would be great. We could set up a road that it should give you the 15 to 20 year life, if not more, um, with proper maintenance and things like that. From what I've seen in Marion County, there's no such thing as a to asphalt road that's 10 or 15 years. <laughs> well, I mean, and, and so you think 330th is going to be a 10 year, it's not going to be. Well, no, but it, but you look at the fact is we didn't we didn't really build that as a 10 year life because what we started with was, a, you know, we could have put a, an asphalt overlay on that for another minute and a half, $2 million dollars would have gone a lot farther. But what, I mean, we're talking about 330th. I, I was yeah. talking about 330th okay. Nighthawk or any of Oh, you mean the one going west? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. yes. Well, no. I mean, that's already. That's ten sure. years old. But I mean, it's. Well, 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 not three thirtieth. The, the no. part oh. from the. So west five from years the old. From K fifteen. <laughs> yeah, yes. Five yes. Years old. yes. Yeah. And again, it comes down to, um, you know, what's underneath there. We've had water or whatever else coming out of there. So. Yeah. I just, you know, that's the that's the geography or topography that we live with in this yes. county. Yes. 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 Springs. Just springy and. Yeah. And that, I guarantee you know, the last You know, if you're going to be in clay or sand. I've seen or, that area. 
I'm, I'm sorry, there's all the gifts. Seven o'clock, eight o'clock at night working on that. So that's why I say I know that area is wet, but I don't know what that'll leave underneath there. So, the Commission, are they going to give the engineer direction or are we still just going to kick it down the road? I'd like to see extra attention everywhere that blade patches have been made. All, all the big areas of blade patches on Indigo, just French drains or something. So you'd be talking about going out and doing what they use with the backhoe and then putting the rock in. I think that and then black blade patch over. It, we we got to we got to attempt. It's, it's got to be. Yeah, done. we got to attempt to make sure that those areas don't pop back up. I'd be. I'd agree with that. So how many spots? Uh, it's in those last two miles, basically. Yeah. Three or four miles, isn't it? So what I'm hearing is two commissioners want spot repair, what I call spot-based repair. One commissioner wants full depth reclamation and full five miles. I just, you got to, I think we got to do more than just put a little black top underneath here and patch over it. And that's not what's proposed. That's not what's proposed. I mean, the engineer is proposing base repair, dig up, back in. That's different than what you were talking about, asphalt on top. Well, and let me let me also throw this out there. Um, the biggest problem you face is like, uh, John may have talked about maybe do some concrete repairs. The, what'll happen is if you do part of them and not the rest of them is, this part will hold up, but this part won't. So now I guarantee you, you're gonna get a crack where you've done that. Um, and that crack is gonna be a working crack and it's you know, be able to put water back in there no matter how much you try to seal it and stuff like that. Joan, I could agree with you 100% except what, what we, what's been done in the past is do that this year and then you do your overlay and stuff next year. That was the process under, up until about five, six years ago, and I haven't seen it for the last five or six years in this county, to but, do this year what you was going to overdo yeah. lay over next year with the cutting, with the digging, packing the rock and right. stuff. Now, well, I, I, when we first started talking about this, you know, I, I kind of felt like this was a good avenue, and I heard about French drains, and I heard, heard about doing things to get the water out, yeah. and then all of a sudden that died. It, it went away, and now all of a sudden I don't think I'm agreeing to the same project that I was in the beginning. That's my problem. One of the things that, that I found out, which again kind of surprised me was I was expecting to see worse situation out of those bad spots than what we did. But basically just showed me the same soil characteristics all the way down, you know, approximately the same moisture. It, it, it's a, it's a, I guess it's something weird and the fact is why are they performing worse than what the rest of the area is? Again, I don't know. There's something there. Well, yeah, and, and that's, again, It's what, gotta be water. Well. Water is always what kills you. Well, I mean, and the, is it active water? Is it passive water? Is it is the kind of soil that, you know, does that soil reach a PI to where it now becomes liquid? Or is it not? Again, that's what we're going to fa face, and we have very in-depth all the way through there as well. I mean, the only way to guarantee, I, I said a guarantee, to extend the project life is to go back and do a base situation the entire way because, again, even doing, based on the way that south miles is, the three inch overlay compared to that two inch overlay, it was my opinion that those should last about the same amount of time before you're ready to do something again. Now again, if you want to do more than that, um, if we do the base all the way through there, I think it would be, it would be um, a trade off to take a three inch overlay, just drop it back to two inch for the whole thing. You know, because again, if you do part of it, um, once and part of it another time, you're right back to the same situation. You're now different, different life cycles. I guess the other thing is think about it some more. I will contact you know, those guys, see see what what their thoughts are. We can come back and um, do something. Are you up with what I was talking about? Other counties, blade or every every, asphalt? every county does differently. Yes. That also depends on what you're trying to do. 
I mean, if you're trying to build structure over top of it as compared to you dig it out, and it, it's, it, it, like I said, you, you, you base it on the experience, uh, aptitude, and the conditions, uh, no matter where, where the ground. Yeah, Above the ground and have the people doing it. Okay. Um, the other thing is you look at what, what could hurt us, um, which I think we can still deal with, is the amount of blade patching we have to do. Again, we're right back to where you know we've got a blade patch 120th, 150th, Indigo, 290th, Quail Creek. So that just pushes pushes that farther out also. So, but anyway, so I'll just I'll try to get some more information and. Okay, but at the beginning of this year, we didn't have we didn't have no idea we was going to have a bond. Right. I didn't have. We got. Can't really be stolen. So I mean, the only thing we have at this point is is to have the county address those issues if we're going to do it to get ahead of it before they mobilize in. Yeah. Well, I guess we do that or we do away with the project. Oh well, yeah. Well, now well, you got the bond issue. What's I mean? You got the bond sets there. You don't have to spend it this year. Yeah, the prices go up. Yeah, that's probably right. Yeah. Now, yeah, that's. Yeah. 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 Well, if everybody is happy with going with, with well, what you have designed, Bryce, I mean, that's. Here's, here's the other thing is that if we are to the point to where we're not going to get this done this year, I have also received. Um, a microservicing quote for 190th as well as I had them give us a quote for that um, and they said Indigo Road would be $57,551 per mile but they did not include the 2.2 miles west of there so it would still be the $557,000 per mile so you could go back and put the microservicing on there which should give you not even next year or the following year if you want to do something else. Okay. Just throwing that out there. Is that the trucks that heat reheats? No. 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 This is the material that they drop out of the back of a truck. It's heavier than a than the okay. chip seal, but it's not as heavy as an asphalt. Runs about half to three quarters of an inch. I showed you. Yes. Yeah. It'll be the rust and the cracks. Short so, term fix. Yeah. So that Short but again. Maybe that gives us the most bang for the buck, and we can get more roads done. Well, I mean, honestly, that's that's where you know, I give it, giving you a list of 30, 38 million dollars worth of house yeah, work needs to be done. <laughs> so we got, we, got to we got to do it, do it right. And then yeah, we've got well, we've got another one hundred and fifty miles of roads got to be fixed. Yeah. So which do we do? And we've got bids. For servicing, they're actually pretty good bids. Well, I, I think yeah, so. Too, that we, right. To me, we need to take advantage of those bids yeah. and get something done now. Well, I, I will, I will drop the subject, I guess. And I, I like what I've seen on the price of that, for that, and just hope that hope that I don't have to eat a lot of crow. <laughs> that's 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 what I don't want to have to do because I think we've got a good thing going here if we just do it right. And so I agree with you, Randy. It's just maybe you ought to talk with the contact tractors and see if they can give us any kind of more guarantee on those areas that we're worried about. Well, no, no. I mean, I, I get you shaking your head, but you don't even know what I'm saying yet. They're, they're not going to guarantee anything. Yeah. Well, they can issue a change order and say, you know, if we do this, X, Y, and Z, we can try to get you a better base in these locations. We can do something. You're just shaking your head off the get-go. That, well, that's... but again, where you're looking at the fact is, where do you now want it? Do you want to just do it on the south five miles? Do you want to do it six and a half miles? The you're, south, you're right I mean, back the, south, the south five is, is definitely where our problems are. Uh, I'll contact them and say what. So, uh, what I'd like to do, Bryce, is if they would do something that that's affordable for us on that five or six miles, then it takes the load off you. You don't have to blade patch no more. You don't have to worry about that. You get your job done, and we do it with the with this bit, and it helps you in the long run. I mean, 
Uh, Brad, do you have a comment? Uh, you know, I don't know that I, I haven't thought it all through yet, and I haven't made those phone calls. I know Cornejo's in house counsel, but whether it's a separate bid and if we run the risk of someone else, you know, underbidding them, then we're back to that two bidder thing. However, they were so significantly under that if they latched it on to what they're already, you know, letting a bid on, maybe I could figure out a way for that not to be the, the complete rebidding of the whole thing. I, I just don't know. I, I will tell you, the industry standard or the agreement that they've kind of had in the past is that if a project is rebid fairly soon, they will come in approximately the same bid. Now, it's not guaranteed. Uh, there, there has been a couple cases where people have said, "Hey, if they're gonna if they're gonna send out the same bid, we're gonna beat them by hundred bucks." That doesn't go well yeah. in the contracting industry yeah. when they meet other yeah. places. Well, I don't, but I don't, I don't like going out for rebids once well, every you know, and, and, and if you're only doing <clears throat> a portion of it and it's not like the full depth, yeah. I'm thinking. It's, it's a question of what we do, and I wasn't talking about necessarily doing a full rebid. I'm just talking about this as a separate piece. Okay. Yeah. We well, like I said, let me, issues, let me contact them. Would you just handle it like a change order? Yeah. Kind of you would have to go back to rebid. Depends on how much of a change it is yeah. when we start to get into an issue. And I guess my, my next thing is you bring in someone to do base repair, as in dig up, pack in. Where do you start? Where do you stop? Yeah. I mean, one, one of the contractor's opinion is five, next contractor's opinion is. 25. Right. Well, I, I'm, I'm saying you go with your parent local bidder and you issue them a change order if they can give you a reasonable. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, well, okay. like I said, I'll talk to them. Appreciate it. Um, okay. I sent you revised technician. I'm not trying uh, to ask you. Oh. Right. The, the other there it is. Lost. <laughs> oh, you found it. And yeah, it was, four, it was $14.99.99 for, for, <laughs> yes, for, yep, for that compactor. So, but anyway, so that's what I'll try to work on. You didn't on. figure in shipping? Uh, I think it's they is, that is, is the they include that shipping, but I, I will think check so. into it. Yep. Yep. If nothing else, they will ship it to the store and we can pick it up. So. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. So All right. Shipping. Uh, the revised technician position description. Yes. Did everybody look at it? I changed yes. it back to all stuff being reported to a county engineer. Anything else that you guys wanted or any other questions from commission? If you got somebody in mind? I I've got a guy that I've contacted, but I'm not gonna say just him. Well, you still have to advertise. Yep. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. The yeah. Yeah. There's somebody up and, and maybe and that'll be somebody if the commission approves yes. the position yeah. and the job description. Yep. I move to approve the road bridge technician position and job description. Is there a second? I'll second that. Second commission approved that discussion. All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. 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 Opposed say nay. I, I went I'm just sitting there thinking, 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 thinking. <laughs> okay, it's uh, five and oh, yeah. correct? Yeah, yeah, okay, we got it. All right, thank you. Um, That'll need to go to yeah. our office. Yeah. Uh, the economic development grant, um, I sent you a revised one this morning. I, don't, I really got some bad design information, but then I also um, um, changed some of the scope, if you guys are interested. Um, if you do, I mean, obviously the biggest thing is probably the one of the biggest, I'd say, once is to widen the roadway and or do structures if we need to. Is that a necessity? No, the roadway is much more important than what we're looking at. So if we just stick with a full depth reclamation, we could still go back with the double chip seal, um, like we did on those over here, or we could turn around and put an overlay on top of that Obviously, any kind of overlay would be uh, preferential to the double chip seal due to the amount of uh, trucks. Um, this, obviously, uh, I hate to guess what the percentage is for big trucks going up and down there with those three elevators around there. Right. So anyway, um, I don't know if you guys have any input either way, what you want to do. Um, I was talking to Representative Bark a little bit, and he said, well, hey, just get back with me if, you know, uh, whatever, well, he may be interested. Um, he uh, he had just heard that they that KDOT said to go for the uh, economic development grant, and so um, he didn't really have any more information than that. So 
it was just a matter of the first spreadsheet. I couldn't read the first numbers. Well, and that's sign. and then when I found out the numbers, I kind of yeah yeah off. yeah. Uh, well, and again, we, that that huge expense. Obviously, a lot of that was design work. Uh, like I said, I had some erroneous numbers. But, but in, in looking at the updated numbers and the the amount of traffic on that, I guess I'd ask for commission opinion of the do the full depth reclamation and the two inch asphalt overlay on it. Is that on? Is that on the sheet here? It was emailed out. Uh, it was email, I emailed out this morning. I gave you two different options. One said full depth recognition with two inch overlay, no structures. And that was a total cost of $6.41 million. Um, that was for the entire project. Um, now, again, if we want to stick the other options, we don't have, with this 40%, I don't know whether we need to stick, whether you want to stick with 40%. KDOT rec rec recommends a minimum of 25%. But again, it's all about how far your money can, how far you want to take your money. But on the 14 and a half miles, doing the full depth reclamation and the two inch asphalt overlay, the county share at 40% is 2.5. Yes. That's reasonable. For, for what you get, I, I would say that's worth pursuing. And I would, a lesson I've learned from you is to, to try to do a higher cost match to get up our odds. That 40% though, right? Yes, you said. That, this is a 40%. Yes. 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 Uh, now, I why, did. Why? Maybe we've talked about this. I don't know. Why, why are we doing a full depth and not just a double chip seal like we did on Nighthawk? I mean, well, Nighthawk is going to need the, the, the overlay before, yes. before long. Yes. Now, I'm, um, I'm just trying to think why don't we stagger there, spend some back there. Well, again. $38 million that I've given you, where do you want to put the money? We could do the double chip seal after the full depth reclamation, but you're probably going to need the overlay up there sooner okay. than what you would on that because okay. that has a higher uh, passenger vehicle. This one up here runs trucks all year long because of the three elevators. Okay. That in itself would justify more of a top approach. So you have more tonnage. Yeah. And, and 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 that's you know I mean we could go back and do that and then you know if it's down the road next year we could let a contract okay or, or, or whenever that may be we could overlay both of them you know again it's uh, we've just got so many things to throw I just just want to verify you know yeah you got a full depth and no overlay right why why is this one getting it all at once right I just want to make sure yeah that's yeah. that's being yeah we out also there to the public. we also have the the strong turning movement um, going limestone up to Tampa with those trucks, that's awful hard on that. And we have the stopping just uh, stopping stuff on either end for those big trucks. That creates an awful lot of stress as well. I see trucks on Nighthawk all the time, but I I drive it a lot. Well, and again, they um, I just look at the fact is that they um, it seems like there's more up there because okay. of the three elevators. Um, you, you've got right. the counts. So yeah. You think we need to approach them, see if they'd like to be included? What's that? Agri trails. Uh, um, do you want to know what their property tax yeah. bill is? <laughs> I, I would already have paid for paving that road just yes. like they did the yeah. one west of there. Yeah, I, no, they uh, have elevators down south that do the same. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So it's well, got and I, I can't tell you that about two, three years ago, um, I was told of a lady, I think she was up north central Kansas somewhere, that actually contacted elevators about possibly putting a penny or two <laughs> on each bushel of grain to go for that didn't go well didn't go yeah. Ro a so roads surcharge basically yes <laughs> yeah. it didn't go over real well so okay. but anyway but as commission consensus on 290th to drop the widening of structures and shoulders and focus on the surface with the full depth of reclamation and two inch asphalt and proceed with the grant application at the 60 40. second that <laughs> it's consensus. But yeah. I'm consensus. Fine either way. Consensus. Consensus. Let's go with consensus. Okay. So full health recommendation with a two inch overlay, no structure, no way. Yeah, it's like you presented. Yeah. Okay. Everybody nodding. Yes. Everybody nodding. <laughs> Just checking. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, um, hate to ask. Land use agreement, the road use agreement. I mean, you and I need to meet. Okay. Just for a little bit. That's okay. the only reason. 
I didn't even call you this morning because that's going to take a few minutes, and I didn't know if you'd be available. So for, that, for you, I'm always good. And I, you know, I count on that. Right. I, I'd like to take that one one step further too. There's one big feller pushing this guy right here, and you, and you, and everything. Where do we want him to stop at? I mean, he wants to do. I think he wants to do clear to 77 Highway on 290th, right? I'm, I'm I mean, they're talking about land use. We're, we're oh, talking about I road thought, use. No, 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 I'm talking about the, the road use and stuff like private individuals. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I think he is. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yes. Yeah. and where, where's, where's these guys going to, how are you going to do this guy? I mean, are you going to let him do it in front of his house and then he, he expects to go clear to the quarry and then on to Lincolnville when you got a greater operator that meets you on the road? I mean, if this great county greater operator is going this way and here comes Mike, comes greater in the other way. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm just, I'm just saying, yeah, does the county? That is the question. Yeah, and so. I, well, actually, I will. I will <clears throat> add to that. Um, not so much that, but I'm getting more heat from other people, actually. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. Did you tell them to call me, or is that just something that Jason <laughs> emailed? Them? Would I do something like that? I have, I would. I would like to think you would, no. but you know, that's I, okay I, if you did. About, about once a week, somebody else. But I, I think you've talked about mowing and other things, yeah. and that's probably the biggest ones right now. Most of so that I've, I've addressed, but really, he's the one who gets the initial call. At least I get the impression that these people that call me have already called, and we're like, we're trying to work through that yes. kind of an answer. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I, don't, I don't know what the great answer is going to be, but we're going to come up with something, and I've got most of the rest of that dealt with. This is the biggest issue. Yeah. The biggest one I get in with is the vegetation issue. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes. and just, I think I've got that. If we could just get that to a exemption I, tier yeah. certificate. I think we have that. For yeah, you guys this. gave me direction. Oh, we've already given that, that direction. Yeah. Vegetation. Yeah. Is ago. As long as they're just cutting it, grass and small growth. Right. Yeah, we just needed official so that Bryce can tell them. Yes. Yeah. Your yeah. Vegetation, yeah. you're good. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, and that uh, I don't know. Uh, was you going to write up something on the culvert? Yes. Policy? Okay, got that. Um, was looking at another tractor up here, uh, but it's not ready yet, so I won't talk about that. Uh, building locations. Um, I have the city has contacted me about uh, possibly up here in the what it, business park, north side of Fifty Six. <coughs> um, Hardware store? Yes, yeah. uh, in between the hardware store and the Envis building, as well as the other property up there. Uh, I haven't really got into specifics about it, but I think that would be would be a good. All the utilities would be right there, fiber optics right across the roadway. The biggest thing I would see there is I'd probably like to do some sort of a direct access back out to 50, simply because if we come out of there both ways, we're doing several 90 degree turns with our big equipment. That's, that's and I, I would not really want to do that. 56? Yes. Okay. Right, right here, by uh, yeah, the town. Um, you said I, 50. I, I was just like, over the hills. What did they say? You, you said, said 50. 50. <laughs> okay. I'm like, what are you going to do? Build an overpass that we're married? Go down sunflower? Yeah, build an overpass. Yeah. Um, but uh, obviously, I, and I contacted KDOT to check into the permit, uh, or if that's possible. The thing they brought up too, and that was the city also said, if we do, would do it. If they were able to do that, maybe we could get some dedicated turn lanes there as well for safety. Because obviously if we would be coming eastbound and want to turn there, we probably still want to have a bypass lane. Yeah. So yeah, that's that would help the city as well. Yes. Yeah. So, but anyway, I'm uh, still looking on that. Too. So, well, Bryce, thank you for that because we just need to open up all any possibles, yep. everything possible. Yep. So. Um, one of the areas I was looking at by Canada is actually owned by the Corps of Engineers. Um, so that might be something to look at. I wouldn't think there'd be too much of a problem there. It's just a extra part of ground that, that's um, grassland. So, but anyway, obviously we've got the stuff with the city of Hillsboro as well. So, but anyway. Um, just kept to see that. To build it. Yes. Got lots of land. Yes. Yep. And I do appreciate everybody, you know, offering whatever they can. Yes. To make that work, so. Um, I think that's it. Do you have guys. Two culvert bins? Yes. Yes. I mean, you, used, you emailed Culver Fitz. Yes, what did they do with those? Um, yes, contact, if that's the first time that they, hey, bring those up. 
that is the first time they have bid through us directly. Um, they have typically uh, provide culverts to one of our other suppliers. Um, but based on the numbers that they submitted, uh, I would recommend or I would ask for approval for contact uh, for those bid amounts that, that I sent. Um, and as far as I think they said uh, four weeks, we, we feel comfortable in waiting that long. Um, Steve says we're in a pretty good shape as far as culverts. Uh, we've got a lot of men, but I can, that's a tremendous savings I look at from from low to high. So, okay. is there a motion to approve the culvert bid? Culvert bid from Contech. C O N T E C H. Yes, in the amount of $29,646. Motion by Commissioner Gehring. Is there a second? Second yep. by Commissioner Dalkey. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried 5 0. Thanks for bringing that up, Tina. What else are we forgetting, Tina? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, all right, I'm sorry. Who made right? the motion, Gary? Gary. Second, okay. second Dalkey. Thank you. Yes. This she's, one is she's still on vacation, though, from last week. You know, yeah, so. vacation. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get in trouble. Yeah. I'm just recording all these because you guys didn't read them out. <laughs> 38. Yeah, that one was low, current low bid. Yes. At all of the years ago. Yeah. The only other things that were in the packet were that were like other information that you had emailed. So we had specifications for that. That was your addendum, I think, that you sent out. I included that in the packet for them. You had a final statement of project cost for uh, bridge replacement, uh, which is just information. Yeah. Yeah. That was the one by Ramona and 370. Yep. And that just says what we paid and that we don't owe any more on that. I think that was, was that all I had in your packet for road and bridge? I think so. Commission? Uh, Bryce, I went out this week, like I said, I was driving this weekend and the road the, that you guys just got done with the concrete base uh, on, Pawnee. on Pawnee from 50th to, or 50th to 60th, 60th, 60th yes. to 70th, there you go. That's uh, the shortcut across there, it's looking good, it's needed that for a long time. My question to you is now are you address, going to address that with some other rock? Or this you? week. Okay. All right. Uh, what would it take to get the Olney Road to look like that from, from Sunflower into Olney? The fortunate thing about Pawnee is it had a lot better base than what we're looking at. Okay. Uh, the only way that we can get Olney Road to get anywhere near that is going to be a full depth reclamation with material on top of it. And I still don't know if we would end up with what we'd have down there. Would, would you not? Would you not bring in rock and stuff? Would you tear lay that back out? Would you not bring in rock and mix all this up together and build? What I'm saying is right. build it like we did the west right, right, right. out of there. Um, right. But again, I, and I don't know what what is the pavement composition or whatever else um, of the only road, but I do know that the amount of rock that's been put on Pawnee was way more considerable than what Pawnee would have. I mean, we, we constantly dropped rock. I, I understand that. But that's how we built that west out of there is bring the rock in when we're building it with west of uh, west of Olney. Yes. Okay. And well, so. again, I mean uh, to to if well, are you talking about going back to rock or paint? That's what I would do. I personally would. Well, honestly, yeah, that's the, that's the same thing we would do is go back if and I don't, I don't know the, the full depth reclamation would be very costly for three miles unless we were doing it. Uh, on one of the other projects, they would be in Right. But if we I went back that. and rebuilt it, yeah, we'd add, the, we'd add some large, you know, the crushed concrete or rock to make, make it a lot better. The biggest thing about that, too, is it needs to have a good crown on it. That's what you notice. Everything else, we've got to put that, once you put that crown on there, it dries three yes. or four times faster, and that's the name of the game. I'd just like the rest of you commissioners to take a look at that. Road well, that's, that's, that's kind of what I heard last yeah. time was let's go back to rock on it. It's wide and flat. Yeah. Yeah. We'll yeah. see if you have any other choice. Yeah, it's, 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 it's dangerous the way it is. I mean, well, that's, even that's even if I'm you went back right to now, the old way of tearing it up and letting it sit for two or three years like that's, they used yep. to do. Well, uh, yeah. no, but that's that's why I say 
I think it'd be better served. I know the public that goes to the only church in Peabody loves the west side, said get the other side just as good as the west side. So for for right now. I mean that's whether we come back that, and, that's and that's chip what I was later. No, that's what I was shooting for just okay. out there. Yeah, okay. So. Good and enough. honestly when you when you do the recycle stuff like that, the hotter the better. I mean typically you get more heat involved with the mixing process, it dries out a little faster. Right now, to me that's the worst piece of blacktop we got. Yeah. And, and we're we're putting maybe three patches on it every couple of weeks just to try to hold it. Yeah, yeah. blacktop left. It, yeah. No, and that's well, I mean, like we we tried to patch that in twenty nineteen and it was falling apart right oh, now. Yes. So I mean it's just so okay. So is that a direction from the I, I just I just bring it up so that because the commission would back that so whenever I don't know what your schedule is for your next road to do something like that but. well we we uh, that's that's one of them we had to work on I've given you the the roads we kind of worked on um, you know from Nighthawk to Pawnee to you know all those down there so the biggest problem we're facing now is just we finally got our distributor put back together after building the whole rear end but um, with this weather change like it is how soon can we start blade patching because the blade patching has to has to fit in a pretty, you know, we only got X amount of time to do that, so. Yeah, I, I think you've got to go ahead from the commission, as far as I'm concerned, to yep. see, just to get it back to rock and, yep. and the crown and yep. With, yep. with our rock that we've got up there. Yep. I mean, cement, not rock. But but any opposition to that? I, mean, I see no opposition, yeah. so. I just look at the safety is what I'm It is, it right. is absolutely dangerous. Yep. Very good. Okay, what else? We got a direction. We're on a roll. We didn't. We didn't uh, say yay or nay on, on the microsurfacing. One ninetieth. Okay. We. Um, okay. So is that something we should be addressing? Yes. Okay. For one ninetieth. If you, if you can get them here. Well, he told when, when I talked to him it's about a month ago. Uh, he submitted his bid a little over a week. It was April 29th. Um, he said that they're probably looking at the end of June to July. They're going to be working in Wichita as well as Salina this year. So, okay. what is the bid amount again? Uh, for 190th, he said, well, he had $58,376 per mile, but he did not include the 2.2 miles west of there. So, we were at. Say, let's say, move forward. And what was the name of the company? Um, this is Vance Brothers. What was it? Vance. Vance. V-A-N-C-E. Yeah. Yeah. It's only a hundred one company. Yeah. Yeah. They bought, they bought it. They, they bought it up there. Competition. There's someone else to bid it. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And I, I that was the song rolling around over there. Yeah. You guys yeah. are going to make me have a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen her too, but. Yeah. <laughs> but we, we, and, and honestly, that's, um, that is, I, to say it's an issue, um, I've actually, as far as the surface recycle we talked about before, there's one, one company doing that now yeah. as well. So it's, it's less than that. yeah. I, Tina, I would not ever want to cause you a stroke. That's absolutely, I agree with you. Okay, just make sure that whenever you guys make a decision on this, that I know the contractor name and the total yep. dollars. Yep. Put in the minutes, please. So. Assuming the 8.5 plus 2.2, at fifty-eight thousand three hundred seventy-six a mile, it comes up with six hundred twenty-four thousand six hundred twenty-three dollars. Where's that going to come from? Well, it's a, it's part of our bond project. It's part yeah. of bond process. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's, that's yeah. Right now the, the yeah. one of the things about this is uh, this is such a high quality aggregate. It's actually the Baxter Springs chat. Uh, they have to bring this in by truck. They're going to store it at the Hillsboro. They had talked about storing at the Hillsboro Airport. Um, because there are, spe you actually have have to have a special permit from the uh, was it the NRC or something like that, uh, the Nuclear Historic Commission, commission yeah. for storage. Yeah. They have to provide secondary <laughs> containment units and things like that just to use this material. But it's fantastic material. But the only way you can use it is if it's totally encased by asphalt or concrete. So anyway, like I said, it's very very good material. So, Mr. Gary, did you have a motion? Uh, I got a motion to proceed. With uh, Vance Brothers, Vance Brothers on the uh, one 190th project. Except they're totally Vance Brothers. Vance Brothers um, Incorporated. I second that. I can do eleven miles. Yeah. Does eleven include the two? The two I I one? I had two point two miles west of town plus Good. eight and a half said. miles in between. So it's eleven and a half. Okay. Eleven point. To proceed with Vance Brothers on the 190th project, 
to come in at the six hundred twenty-five thousand dollars range. So that's motion by Commissioner Hearing, second by Commissioner Becker. I had eleven miles on this sheet, yeah. but yeah, there was not to exceed. Can't do this as much. Six hundred twenty-five thousand. Yeah. This was five dollars under. Okay, we have a motion, we have a second discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carried by a vote. Okay. Thank you for catching this. Yes. We, that way we can get that locked up. Okay. I think I heard some numbers I liked, and so it <laughs> stuck in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I will, I will um, now. Okay. Is that it now? Oh, we're roll. Question. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, an awful lot of stuff today. So. Oh, um, we put in. We're going to put that in the paper for summer help today for uh, for flaggers and things like that. We need and stuff like that. So we gave up. Okay. So we did lose one employee. Uh, Friday was his last day, but he went to work for Agco. So. Yeah, call called back and I said, well, it seemed good, but I can understand it. But, so uh, our new truck driver will start on the 23rd, as planned. So, okay. anything else? What do you pay him to just stand and hold his son? That's interesting. I'm just curious. Probably about as much as you're making per hour. Right? That's fair. Yes. Because okay. he can multitask. Yes. Right. Um, Oh I boy. We're just, we're just, we're just, we're just, we're as long as there's a hot spot in the truck. Was there a need? Just picturing friend. it all in my head. Why have why have enemies with friends like us? Yes. 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 All right. Thank you, Bryce. Okay. Anything else? Are you you want to stop on the office when you're done or do I assume you have other stuff to do? So we are staying till six, right? What's that? It'll be after six. Yeah, probably after six. If that's when the party starts. Thank you. Thank you. You bring in the refreshments. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One miscellaneous item in there to get caught up was generators. Uh, there was interest in the possibility of, well, first of all, the annex being hooked up to the main generator and also ambulance stations. Is there interest by the commission to explore that? The ambulance stations for to be separate generators, but then like Jonah said, it may be I don't know a separate generator here, another to go well, to that. Look at look at which option would be. Look at the options. Okay. Cost effective. Whichever is the best cost effective. Now, yeah. is it vital that they have power all the time? Well, it's not real convenient when it gets interrupted. I know, but you can't. Yeah, you know, we had to choose. Mm -hmm. Not to have everything right. power back up. This right. was, was important to keep us going. Right. Is that building important? That, right. Well, I is, guess is that an asset? What we would like to know is what's the cost, and yes. then we can compare the cost cost to the benefit. Like Ken said, with the cost benefit. Okay. Look at it. If it's if it's fifty thousand, eighty thousand dollars, probably not. If it's in a more affordable range. Um, I mean, we're talking about four people. Well, two departments now. Two people each department. Yeah, it shuts, shuts <laughs> down. five. Yeah, you just hired another one. Yeah, five. We did? Yeah, yeah. I, think yeah. It would, I think it would be <clears throat> smart on the commission's part of going forward. We get these we get these big numbers in front of us, you know, and people just say, this is what's going to cost. I'd, I'd say don't even bring it in anymore until we get a cost-benefit analysis to go with it. If you can't do that, don't bring it in. I, I really don't want to look at it if there, if there isn't one. I mean, yeah, we, there's certain things we need, but prove to me where, where it's going to pay for itself. If it can prove pay for itself over a period of time, I'm receptive. Not, I'm not otherwise. Yes, Dave, the question, to your, uh, question answer to your question is if we have everybody else over there and over here firing up, 
we have five people sitting over there when it goes down. I mean, it may not be for a day, it may not be for half a day, it may be for an hour, I don't know. What do you do then? To send them home. Send them home. That's what I do. Okay. We'll call I you just, when it comes back on. We'll call you when it comes back on. You don't do that anymore. Yes, we do. Oh, yeah, you do. Yes, we do. Yeah. <laughs> half the people. All the office stuff. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, half my workforce I sent home. Which we go go to lunch early. Yeah. <laughs> I guess my question is the commission, is there interest in pursuing that? See, and see if what so, the cost is, yes. And if so, where I mean look at on the other building. You right, know, the, the cost should be realistic. Then my next question is, who would you like to spearhead the investigation or <laughs> information on that? Would that be the guy that brought this idea so, up? Yeah, who, who on the commission would be have some background. Well, I don't know, wait a minute though. He sells it. He's going to bid on it though. Yeah. Well, he can he can give you general information without that being an issue. Okay. Yeah. General information is okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Make it general. <laughs> and free. <laughs> <laughs> the prices are right. That's part of the detail. All right. There's nothing against the people over there. It was just. Yes. Mm. All right, administrative business. <laughs> okay. <laughs> have the minutes of April 29th and May 2. Do we have a motion to approve April 29th and May 2nd? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Gehring. Is there a second? Second. Second, Commissioner Becker. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion to approve by vote. We usually do this like. <laughs> in your packet, you just had some general information from Orsted. I just wanted to point that out. Uh, they I've also changed. provide, I'm sorry, Tina. That's right. On Orsted, they, I, I got some information from them just right before I left to come here because of some main change issues and some other things. But I'll forward on to everybody. I know it's not anything that's going to materially change. What's going on? But we have to just um, oh, are you finished? Yes. Okay. I do not have any salary sheets today. We do have early checks. Um, you have the report on the table in front of you. The total amount is eighty-three thousand thirty-one dollars and thirteen cents, and it's for various items. About forty-eight thousand, or a little under, was for that uh, ambulance pay ambulance um, building payment that you approved the other day. Uh, one of them is for the vehicle for planning and zoning. Um, you've got the report there on the table. Uh, we had a, a couple of other just um, invoices that needed to be paid now. And the $560 loan origination fee for the uh, to use motor freighters, that was just awarded to Vintage Bank. So those are, that's a kind of in a <coughs> nutshell what your payables are today. Any questions on payables? Any mm -hmm. motion to approve the early checks at $83,031.13. Motion by Commissioner Gehring to approve. Was there a second? A second. Second, Commissioner Crowfoot. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried by vote. And on the trade, they gave us $3,000 for the expedition. What year was it? 2002. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Like they gave me anything. <coughs> I'm surprised it was that old. Well, it's done now, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so um, we had a change order. We have a change order here for the Hillsboro for the EMS station project. Mm -hmm. These are were punch list items that I believe that. Um, the director had asked for, and the total change order is $8,931.71 addition here for the pro to the project. And it lists out what's there. I don't know, I don't believe I have that in your packet, so feel free to. Yeah, I saw it. it so it might have been a separate email. Maybe it was, I don't should, remember. You sent two or three emails this week. Yeah. There should be extras that were asked for on not punch list items. Okay. Next list would be in the original bid and have to be, uh, but these are additional, yeah, right. And these were requested by the director. The director, one of them I actually requested was the, uh, the future generator box for a hook, and I passed that through a meeting. And it wasn't actually a hookup, it's a it's that is mislabeled, it's it's a 
J box in place and more of it could be that way it could be added. Ideally this would have these proposed changes would have come to you before the work was done, yeah. but I don't believe that's the case of what happened. I believe this work has already been done. But Travis. we do need the approval to be able to pay it. Travis, we did it. No, no, we did. I looked at it earlier. The one that I, I knew is the one I Where was the additional paving? Out there where they parked on the north side? Thousand square feet. Eleven hundred and seventy square yeah. feet. That yeah, how? On the east side, on the back. The back, maybe. The, the patio that they have. Well, it's not a patio. I guess it's just. I call it a patio if it was at my house. Break area. Yeah. There's only one on the east side. There's a big one on the east side. How come that didn't come to us? That's fifty-five hundred eight bucks. I've got an issue with that. Yeah. That's a lot that's a lot of concrete. Six inch. Oh, six inch paving. What was that concrete or that? I mean asphalt. They're not there's no asphalt over there. That's what I was thinking, it's all concrete. So they're going to concrete it in, I thought. I'll see if Travis has time to no answer papers. questions. It's all concrete. I mean the west side the north side. Was all meant to cement it in since the beginning. Yeah. That'd be on the east side someplace. Yeah, and maybe I hadn't seen it. Right. So drive right back in the back, huh? I, I mean, I, yeah, that's what it's got to be. It's got to be that back area because the been power, been. the power was running around the building. I remember looking at that, and it was all dirt. And then when I asked for the the box, it was there where it would be. An ideal location where the gas line could still get back there. Now you can't get a gas line back there. So that was poor later on. So Travis says he can call in. Mm -hmm. yeah. great. In the meantime, uh, there was a uh, student that you had a, a initially approved potentially doing a grant for with an agreement for them to pay that back. Mm -hmm. And I do have the, an agreement from Travis, which is one that we've used before. Okay. Um, and so this one would just need the commissioner's approval. And it's yeah. one of the things we didn't know about. Uh, I'll, what, whose phone shall he call? You can call mine. Well, mine's about dead. So. Yeah, mine's good. Do we have a motion to approve uh, Marion County Grant Program for uh, EMT training for Jeremy Sears. Yeah. It's a precedent we've already set before in the past, so I'd make that motion. Okay, a motion by Commissioner Gehring. Is there a second? No second. Second, Commissioner Crowfoot. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried 5 0. One me. Okay, who was the second on that? Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. Okay, writing frantic game. I'm too slow. You're on speakerphone, Travis. Okay. Randy's so Randy's mic is on point today. <laughs> so uh, I think the question is we've seen an extra fifty five hundred for additional paving. Yeah, that was the original estimate um, did not have apparently the the patio, I guess, that was to be put on the southeast corner and then the additional two feet to the length of that, you know, where our property line stopped and where the cut was on that concrete, there was a top foot gap in there. Okay. Um, that would have been rock and um, they ran it with concrete. Okay. On the north end. We just yeah, didn't north. know anything, we didn't know anything about it. It should have been. I good. guess I didn't necessarily, I, the north. Um, I didn't realize it wasn't, I thought, I'll be honest, I thought there was enough there in contingency. Uh -huh. I didn't realize there was going to be a, a, a deal and then a, uh, an, an additional charge. But then after um, the price of everything, I guess that's the way it worked out. Okay. So I, I wasn't really expecting either, Randy, but um, yeah. Okay. Well, I thank you. That's all right. Thank you for calling in. We just wanted to make sure we knew what we was talking about. Yep. Yep. All righty.
Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye. Now you know. I don't know. So is there a motion to pay or a motion to not pay? No, this would, <clears throat> excuse me, you need a motion to approve that change order or not. And if we don't approve it, then I guess we'll have to figure out um, on the final billing because we have the retainage left to pay, but we've paid everything else. So I don't really know how that works. This amount is more than the retainage, I believe. I'd make the motion. Do the change order. Okay, motion by Commissioner Crowfoot to make the pay the change order in the amount of eighty nine. A change order number of choice two in the amount of eighty nine thirty one seventy one. Is there a second? Yes. Second by Commissioner Dalkey. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Nay. Motion carried four to one. Travis gave them that authority then? What? I mean, you've ratified it. I'm just curious. He thought it was in the bid. It's a kind of argument that he yeah. thought he had enough money in the contingency. Oh, and it, it wound up running over. Next. Wouldn't agree with Kevin so much. Just a reminder of that um, security RFP. Please review that before next week because we need to be able to uh, allow that to be sent out if okay. the board is in security proposals. That's for cameras and different different. Uh, it's just to seek bids on that. It's not accepting a bid or anything at this point. Okay, that's all. I believe I have. All right. Move the county councilor. Oh, you can, yeah, you did the early checks. You can uh, start your two hour session. <laughs> Need the executive session on land acquisition. How long? Uh, two hours. Two hours. Okay. Ten minutes, I think, should cover it, unless you have a lot of questions. All right. I move that we recess an executive session in order to discuss land acquisition in pursuit of KSA 75 43 19B. Uh, for item six, preliminary discussion of acquisition of real estate with the commission, counselor, clerk from 410 until 420. That'll be a 10 minute. We will be, uh, is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Gehring. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carried 5 0. We will be back at 410. 420. It's 410 now. 420. <coughs> I have to get back oh. into this computer to get the camera off, turned off. Oh. Just, just a second. Time to get it done in front of me right there. Yeah. Also, this is two commissioners. It's a little quarter power. Mm. That's true. This conference will now be recorded. Okay, we are out of executive session, no decisions made. <coughs> Get a little horse. Uh, we're going to go back in for a uh, 15 minute executive session for personnel performance. I move that we recess an executive session in order to discuss personnel performance and non elected personnel. Pursuant to KSA 75 4319B for item one, personal matters of non elected personnel performance with the commission and counselor for 15 minutes from 420 to 435. Second. Second by Commissioner Gehring. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Five of them. We will be back in the commission. Recorded. We are out of executive session, no action taken. Uh, we're going to have one more. This, I promise, will be the last one tonight. I move to be recessed in executive session, it feels late, in order to discuss personnel performance or personnel matters of non elected personnel performance pursuant to KSA 75 4319B, item one, personnel matters of non elected personnel performance 
with just the commission for 15 minutes from 436 to 4. You did that to yourself. Thank you. Yeah. 451. <laughs> we moved one on me. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Dolphy. Can all those favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. We are adjourned. We will be back at 451. This conference will now be recorded. All right, we are out of executive session. Any other commission comments? Uh, one commission comment. Sorry, the public. Any comments? Uh, yes. Uh, referring back to the Powerhouse Ministry. Yes. Uh, you know that's a great program, but I don't know if you all know we have the same. We have not the same program, but. A program that's nearly identical right here in Marion now, called Freedom House, right across from the Elgin. They take in the, they take ten women with the same kind of issues and and abused. On top of that, yeah, mm -hmm. abusive relationships. So you know, we need to keep that in mind. Are they taking in local people? Or there's people from Texas. Well, they I think they would take local. Okay, um, I, that's right. They're Girls from Texas. To, right? Well, they have, yeah, I know they've got one girl from Texas. To, to key in on that, there's a, what was that other one that was in Hillsboro where they're bringing people out of poverty? Trying to work. Oh, there. that was core communities. Yeah. That, yep. I mean, that in conjunction with what you just said, mm -hmm. really, we've yeah. got something like that mm -hmm. going on. Very good. Thank you for bringing that information. Yeah, because I didn't. Yeah, the took over the yeah, I know the yellow house right across. Yeah, what do you call that? Dorothy's. I haven't been, Dorothy's, there. Yeah. I haven't been there yet. I need to go. Yeah, you can go in there every day. They serve coffee uh -huh. and, and yeah. rolls, and I think they're going to start the uh, soup salad thing. Huh. I got, I got one. Good. Good place to eat in town. I uh, was tasked to take around for the law enforcement last week for the treats mm -hmm. and the stuff, and I dropped the ball, and it was Friday. And I took mine Tuesday, and I was <laughs> and, and I was running out of time, so I, I, I was called very her. blessed to find that Carla Ham. I bought a, most of her sweets rack, like, and she delivered everything for me. So I want to put out a very special appreciation to uh, Mama oh. C's. Very good. Cool. I, I delivered some rolls on one day, but my rolls were different than you guys. It's <laughs> Tootsie Rolls. Oh, Tootsie Rolls. No. Yeah, Nobody else would have thought of that. All right, motion to adjourn. We got a motion by Commissioner Gary. Is there a second? Thank you. Second, second Commissioner Becker. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carried. We are adjourned. How'd you mean to go, Jimmy? All right. You mean fantastic.